وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعْجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ أَيْذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَيْنَّا لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ الْأَغْلَالُ فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أستاذ عبد الرحمن حسن How are you today? وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm good, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan. Well, yeah. So once again, we find ourselves in the hot seat. It's been a while since we've been here. Um, and I think it's probably worth just talking a little bit about the context behind how this episode came about. Because recently, obviously, football has been on the mind of a lot of people. And some people who might be watching this topic or at least seeing the title of the video might be thinking, why, why are Muslims talking about football? But there's no doubt that our religion has come to talk about everything. And even new matters that come in, we have principles in place that deal with these kind of matters. And we kind of had a discussion yesterday, which was the day after the final of the Euros. So football fever has been across the world for the last two or three weeks. The European Championships have been happening. England got to the final of a major competition for the first time in 55 years. They didn't win the final. They lost on penalties against uh, Italy. But we had a discussion yesterday. We were just talking about it. And through that discussion, and really coming from someone like myself who has previously been very, very heavily invested in sports, still even before this podcast, occasionally watched the odd football match here and there, um, you really gave me a lot of food for thought in the discussion that we had yesterday. And you obviously gave me some Islamic rulings pertaining to football, which I'm, of course we're going to come into later on in the podcast, inshallah. And it really made me think a lot about this particular topic because I know personally friends, I have family members who are really heavily into football. And I don't think they've thought, just like I hadn't had thought yesterday, really about a lot of these issues. And that's why I thought it was really important to do kind of a podcast on this topic, talking about some of the issues relating to football and Islam. So I'm not really going to talk in my introduction about the ruling or anything like that. That's going to come later on the podcast, but we're going to talk about a number of different issues. And again, as always with the hot seat, it's not going to be an easy ride for you. I'm going to be really challenging you and really grilling you on some of the topics and some of the points that you're trying to make and really try and identify whether they stand up or not. So that's a, a quick introduction about how the podcast came about. And I think I'll hand it over to you and you can give an introduction on your side, inshallah. الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد I first want to start by saying جزاك الله خيرا for having me uh, on the hot seat podcast and also this topic we spoke about it yesterday yeah uh, we had our discussion and yesterday I had classes which I was giving. I had sessions which didn't allow me to really prepare the topic and look into it deeply. Uh, it's something I did research before into. But inshallah ta'ala, we'll give the best of what we can inshallah ta'ala. Um, as I always do say, if I say anything wrong or incorrect, it's always from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Yeah. Um, so I say, Musta'ina Billahi Azza wa Jalla, Allah brought us into this world, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for a reason. There's a reason and a purpose why we're here in this world. The first reason why we're here in this world is to attain beneficial knowledge. And Allah mentions that, subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the ending of Surah Al-Talaq. Allah, tabarakahu wa ta'ala, he says, Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawati wa min al-ardi mitlahunna. يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلموا لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما. الله is telling us and informing us that he created the seven heavens and the seven earths and everything in between it and all the creations Allah has created it سبحانه وتعالى. so us included. Mm -hmm. and then Allah تبارك وتعالى he gives us the علة the reasoning of why he created all of that. he says لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير. So the reason why we created you, O oh mankind, and we brought you into this world is so you can have knowledge of Allah Taala. Okay. 
that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is what? يتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير to know that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has infinite st- uh, ability and strength and Allah has infinite knowledge وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما the second reason why we were created and we were brought into this earth is to come with righteous actions and the forefront of righteous action is what? it is to worship Allah alone Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says, I did not create the jinn or the ins except to worship me. So righteous deeds, عِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ وَحَدَةً Singling Allah in worship is why we're here. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions that to us. There are things that can be hindrance sometimes to that purpose and that aim we're here for. Okay. And just, sorry, just for going to like, someone might say that there's two purposes that you mentioned that Allah created us. Doesn't that appear to be a contradiction? Of course it's not because they go hand in hand. You Amen. need knowledge in order to worship Allah. Amen. Okay. Having knowledge of Allah wa ta'ala increases your righteous deeds. Yeah. Every salah we pray, the surah that we must read in every salah is surah al-Fatiha, right? Yeah. So what do we say to Allah? Ihidina siraat al-mustaqib. Allah guide us on the straight path. Which path? Sirat al alim The path of those who you've blessed and you're pleased with. The ones who Allah is pleased with are people who've combined between beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Because the two groups that are going to be mentioned later lack one of the two. غير المغضوب عليه مغضوب عليهم is the Yahud. What do they have? They have knowledge but no righteous action. Waladdalina is the what? It's the Nasara. What do the Nasara have? The Nasara have The Nasara have uh, They have action without knowledge They the have Christians. action without knowledge yeah. The people who أولئك الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقنا They're the ones who combine between not beneficial knowledge and righteous yeah. action Okay So the word مغضوب عليهم are the Jews Generally speaking when you look at the Quran فباءوا بغضب يعني بغضب here means the Yehud the Nasara generally spoken about as what? Dalin. Dalin. Allah mentions it in the Quran. And the, the Prophet explained that last part of the Surah, Surah Al Fatiha. The Prophet explained it in the famous hadith of Adi ibn Hatim. So the point is. Our purpose in this world is to gain beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Okay. There can be things that become hindrance to that, an obstacle to that, can also sometimes divert us from that. Mm-hmm. From those things are when people start to take the world as something very high and big. Allah mentions it in the ayah. He says, Allah says, leave off. The people who've taken their religion, their deen, they take it as a joke and an amusement. They don't take their religion serious. And also Allah Ta'ala says, This world has what? Has deceived them. Mm. They've been deceived by the world. Yeah. Also, a hindrance can be to this purpose why we're in this world can also be following your whims and desires. Allah mentions in the Quran, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ Do you not see Muhammad, Allah saying to the Prophet, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ The one who took his Lord, his desires. وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَىٰ بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَةِ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُون you're going to realize how Allah is truthful in what He says. Well, you nabi u kamitul khabir. Wa man asdaqu min Allahi qila. Wa man asdaqu min Allahi hadith. Allah, as He tells you, it is. What Allah tells us, it is as He told us. You will find that when you try to explain something to them from the religion, khatama Allah has sealed Subhanahu wa Taala ala sami. They can't hear when you say what you're saying. Wa wa qalbihi and their hearts. Wa jala ala basarihi ghishawa. And there's a veil in front of their eyes. So all we have to say is فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ Who can guide these people? فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ Who can guide these people? مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ After Allah تبارك الله. If Allah chose not to guide them, mm. then who really can? And this might apply to some people who hear this ruling today and listen to it. 
because they've taken their whims and their desires, their, their, their shahwa, their desires, they've taken their Lord as their desires, they're going to be blinded from the truth, seeing it. Even if it comes to them. Because they're deeply rooted into this, invested everything into it. They're not willing to see it. They're not willing to listen to it. They're not even willing to open their hearts to it. And it's not because they are right in what they believe. It's because of who can guide them after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what we have to understand Shahid is the eyes that we have the ears that we have the mouth that we have the body parts that we have as it was given to us by Allah he is the one who tells us what we can or can't do with it okay yeah. and we will be questioned for what we do with our eyes yeah. we'll be questioned what we do uh, with our ears and we'll be questioned with what we do with our hands and our legs those part, body parts, the day of judgment, are going to be interrogated. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِعِلْمٍ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Allah Taala here is telling us, our hearing, our seeing, our hearts, all of them are going to be interrogated يوم القيامة. Allah tells us in another ayah, اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون. The body parts are going to start talking, and they're going to testify and bear witness against them. So you have to remember you're a slave, the master who gave you these limbs, who gave you these body parts, who's given you this, is going to interrogate, is going to question it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, the purpose I mentioned at the beginning that we're created for was what? Ibadatullahi wahda, to worship Allah wa ta'ala. The scholars, they mentioned the ibadah of Allah wa ta'ala, it stands on two great pillars. Okay. Kamalu al-mahabba ma'a kamalu al Complete humility and complete love. This is something we give to Allah wa ta'ala. Complete love is for Allah wa ta'ala. And complete humility is for Allah. Mm -hmm. Shahid, when you prostrate and you go into state sujood, when you put your head on the floor, that's a state of humility. You've put your most honorable part of your body, your face, on the earth. For who? For Allah. Allah. You humiliated yourself for Allah. You humbled yourself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what's in your heart whilst you're doing that? Extreme love for him. These two came together. Hmm. That's why Ibn al-Qayyim says that Allah Ta'ala, that position, because it exemplifies, it projects, what does it do? It shows the highest level of ubudiyah. That's the time when the slave is the most closest to Allah. That's the time when the slave is most closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Because you've combined between those two, those two pillars. Kamal al ma'a kamal al if a person takes one of those branches I mentioned mm -hmm. and gives it to anybody other than Allah Ta'ala is on a dangerous path. As the poet said, عَدُوٌ لِمَنْ عَادَتْ وَسِلْمٌ لِأَهْلِهَا وَمَنْ قَرَّبَتْ لَيْلَ أَحَبُّ وَأَقْرَبَ يعني you're in... Some people are like that when it comes to the dunya. This line of poetry is talking about a man who loved a woman by the name of Layla. He loved her excessively beyond and above what, our, what we can comprehend. And he kisses the walls. يُقَبِّلُ ذَا الْجِدَارِ وَذَا الْجِدَارِ He kisses that wall and that wall. And then he said, الجدار, These walls that I'm kissing are not what's taken my heart. It's someone who used to, once, once upon a time, who lived behind these walls is what I'm in love with. So he's saying, Anybody who Layla hates, I automatically hate you. Anyone who Layla brings close, Layla Anyone who loves Layla and, and Layla loves them in return. And so anyone who Layla loves and brings Layla brings them close, I'm. Same with me. Some people are today like that when it comes to football, their team that they support. In even the worldly affairs, they're like that. And Allah Ta'ala, He told us the dangers of this. He said, Allah tells us, from amongst the people, not everybody. From amongst the people, there are those They take besides Allah and dead. And that is comes from the word nid, someone equal to Allah. Mm. In the Quran, there are three terms that are used. The word nid is used, the word kuf is used, and the word mithli is used. And that is used in this particular uh, verse, making equal to Allah. The word kuf is used. Qul wallahu ahad. Allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulid wa lam yakul lahu kuf wal ahad. Kuf means the same thing. And the word mithl is used. Laysa kamithli shay 
ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع وهو سبيع البصير. What does need mean? There are those who make what they love equal to Allah تبارك وتعالى. Okay. ومن الناس ما يتخذ من دون الله أنداد يحبونه كحب الله. Or they even like that thing the way that they love Allah تبارك وتعالى. والذين آمن underline this part of the verse. والذين آمن those who have iman in their hearts. What are they? And it shows on their limbs. Those on how are they like? والذين آمن أشد حب لله. Their love is for Allah. Ultimate love is for Allah. So the work out today is we're seeing people whose love, and I'm going to expand on that inshallah ta'ala in, through the podcast inshallah yeah. ta'ala in great details inshallah ta'ala. That's the first point I want to talk about. And there are five points I want to talk about. The second point I want to talk about inshallah ta'ala is the, the path that football has taken today is these two. Football is an ideological doctrine. It's a madhab fikri. Any ideological doctrine that I've come, mm-hmm. if it wants to remain, there are three things that it has to have. Or else it goes and perishes over time, just like every, every other ideological doctrine has perished. The first one is wujudun al-ansar, to find people who will support it, people who will invest in it. Okay? This allows that belief or the ideology, that doctrine to remain and carry on. The second one is to find and to have wujudu kutub hafidatu li hadhi al-afkari al-batila to have books, works that are written that support this false ideology or this ideology. The third one is wujudu atba' li hadhi al-afkari. This ideology has people who follow it. So the first ones are people who are aiding it right, and okay. investing it. And second one is books and history written about it, documented. And the third one is having followers that will follow it. Any ide- ideological doctrine that has that generally lives on through history. Okay. Football today, if you look at those three, it has it. First one is supporters and people who invest in it. Then look at the... Uh, Yeah, the, the football sponsors, sponsors and, and that's hadith wala haraj. I mean, I don't think I need to explain that. The second one, which is books and everything. Let's just go to the news. How many channels do you have to go? Do you go through? And there's football being spoken about, or channels are designated for football only. Okay. Yeah, and Sky Sports, and it's designated for sports and football mm-hmm. spoken about. And sports football, I think, is the highest, right? Yeah. yeah okay, that's fine. Sport. The third one is followers. Yeah, definitely. Of course, that's fans. Football, that's the fans. The second thing I mentioned and I said is that it's Tawut Asri, according to some of its people. Ibn Al Qayyim when he defined Tawut, and when we understand it, then we can say, "Ooh, is that football? Is that the case for football or not?" Ibn Al Qayyim in his Kitab Al Alam Al Muqirin, he says in the first volume, page fifty-three, he says that Tawut is كل ما تجاوز به العبد It is anything that the slave goes outside his boundaries, beyond and above his boundaries. Min ma'bud is someone who's worshipped. Aw matbu'in or followed. Aw muta'in or he's obeyed. All three of them is present for football. There are some people who worship the players. Okay? They worship them. Some of them matbu'in, they're followers of this. They don't worship them, at least they're followers of this. And there are some mutar and they follow it. Anything that they're f- your fan. So the third, the last one, they obey it, not follow it. Uh, the third one is to obey it. Obey it, yeah. yeah. So, any- some, so they obey them. If they wear a, you know, ha- advertisements today that we watch, they convince us to buy these products because this football player, he's wearing it, or he's the one. So they'll pay. They'll pay the footballer millions of dollars just to wear their their. His followers yeah. are going to watch it. The third point, inshallah ta'ala, I want to speak about, inshallah ta'ala, is the dangers of being silent about apparent evils when we see it. It's upon the du'at and the people of knowledge. And those who have knowledge, when they see al-munkarat al-zahira, apparent munkar out there, they should not be silent about it. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he tells us that we are the best of nation when we come with a certain quality. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnasi ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkari wa tu'minuna billah. Allah says you are the best of nations, not unrestrictedly like that. No, there has to be certain things we come with in order to be the best of nations, which is what? Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi, you command one another good, wa tanhawna anil munkari, and you warn one another from evil. 
The, Allah also said, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ Let it be from amongst you a people. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Let there be from amongst you people who call to the good and prohibit the evil. Also, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala told us in the Quran that the people who choose not to call to the good and prohibit the evil, that they are cursed on the tongue of Dawood and Isa ibn Maryam. Allah says, لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُودَ وَعِيسَى بْنِ مَرْيَمْ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ كَانُوا لَا يَتَلَاهُونَ عَمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوهُ لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ They used to do bad actions, sins, and also they would not prohibit one another from evil. And they were cursed because of that on the tongue of Dawood and Isa ibn Maryam. If we see evil, مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِرِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ If we see evil, we have to stop it. If we can't stop it with our hands, we stop it with our tongues. If we can't do it with our tongues, we hate it in our heart, and that is the lowest of iman. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says in his kitab, Iqtida'i Sarat al-Mustaqim, the second, second volume, page 87, he says, إن كثيرا مما عليه الناس many things that the people are upon من العادات النومز ونحوها إذا لم ينكر عليهم فيه if there doesn't come out someone and say stop doing this if there doesn't عاد مستحسن عندهم the people will start to think this is good there's nothing wrong with it بل ربما rather what could possibly happen is ظنه بعضهم إجماعا لا يجوز إنكاره they might even think this is a consensus and it's not in a, you're not even allowed to speak to us against it because they'll say all the scholars said no one has ever said anything to us. It's it's like everyone agreed that this is a good thing. That kalam of Ibn Taymiyyah is powerful. Okay. من إذا قيل لهم it's like the people is when it said to them تعالوا إلى ما أنزل الله وإلى الرسول قالوا حسبنا ما وجدنا عليه أبانا. It's like those people when you say to them come to what Allah and His Messenger say they will say to you enough for us is what our forefathers were upon. So Shaykh Lusam ibn Taymi also said in his kitab Iqtada Salat al-Mustaqim li mukhalifati ashab al-Jahim he says فَإِذَا سُوِغَ فِعْلُ الْقَلِيلِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَدَّى إِلَى فِعْلِ الْكَثِيرِ ثُمَّ إِذَا شْتُهِرَ الشَّيْءُ دَخَلَ فِيهِ عَرَامُ النَّاسِ وَتَنَاسَوْا أَصْلَهُ حَتَّى يَصِيرَ عَادَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَلْ عِيدًا حَتَّى يُضَاهِ بِعِيدِ اللَّهِ بَلْ قَدْ يُزَادُ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَكَادُ أَنْ يُضَا أَنْ أَنْ يُفْضِيَ إِلَى مَوْتِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَحَيَاةِ الْكُفْرِ Ibn Taymi mentioned something very important here. He says, if something very little is like turn the blind eye with, then it leads to the big things now. Mm -hmm. So even the small things, we shouldn't let it dis If, if you, someone might think, oh, this is so little, Billahi alayk, man, why are you picking on the small things? If the small things are not stopped, it's going to turn into the big things. In al jibala min al hasa, the mountain, what is it made from? It's made from pebbles. So these little things, when they come together, of course, they're going to make a big thing on us. Okay. So we have to stop the little. What then happens is that this thing becomes famous and a norms for the people. And the people start forgetting where this problem initially came from. It becomes big now, and mm -hmm. they forget the initial thing that it came from. Okay? And Ibn Taymiyyah says then, Hatta yakadu, it could be possible, and yufdiya ila motil Islam, that this becomes a means for Islam to be destroyed in its totality, wa hayatul kufri, and disbelief to live. Shatibi also has يعني, a powerful statement of this in the Kitab al Tasam. Also, great scholars like Hamad ibn Atiq. He mentions a very powerful statement in this issue. Shaykh al-Islam, uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab also has a, a nice powerful statement. Abdul Latif ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Hassan ibn Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab also has a nice powerful statement on this particular issue. You can all go there inshallah ta'ala and look at it. The fourth point inshallah ta'ala that I want to mention here inshallah ta'ala is the importance of knowing fiqh, fiqh al-waqi'ah. Ahmiyatu ma'rifati fiqh waqi'i kurrat al-qadam. Today football, we have to know its reality. And the way it is. And then we can place the ruling of Allah. Fine. Any person wants to place a ruling on a matter requires two things. What is it that he needs? He needs to first of all know the ruling of Allah in that particular issue. And the second thing is that he has to know what? The thing itself that yeah. he's going to place a ruling on. That's why Shaykh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah in his Kitab Ilam al muqirin a very powerful book. A book that Ibn Baz called uh, Kitab al-Islam, he called it. Mm. He says... That any mufti or person wants to give fatwa, they can't give it unless there's two things in place. Fahmul waqi'i, knowing the reality of the issue, wal fiqhu fihi. The second one is fahmul wajib fil waqi'i, which is the ruling of Allah wa ta'ala in this matter. Those two are two things. The ruling of Allah in this matter and the thing that you're going to place a ruling on it. In simple terms, is what the ulama refer to as 
الحكم على شيء فرع عن تصوري yeah. and inshallah ta'ala as we the podcast unravels and we talk about it we're going to speak about football and its reality then we're going to place the ruling on it inshallah ta'ala so the people inshallah can see how the ruling is being reached it's not just it's halal or it's haram fine okay so they, inshallah ta'ala the last and final point that i want to mention is al wasail la ahkam al maqasid a lot of people today they argue and they say football is just a means for what for me to relax for me to f- be in physical shape okay mm-hmm. remember this and always keep this in mind the means that you take laha ahkam al maqasid okay the means al wasail laha it has al ahkam al maqasid the objectives that if the means become haram mm-hmm. that you took can you say that now my objective is fine you can't rob a bank to give the money to charity for you example can't. okay the poet said tarju najat wa lam tasluk masalika inna safina la tajri ala yabis you're looking for success but you're not taking its path for verily the sh- the boat does not sail on the shore yeah if you want if you're looking for something good take its path for it and لذلك there's a قاعده that علماء mention which is another fi ma'alat al af'al am asad al dara'ir Shaltib rahimahullah in his kitab al-Muwaffaqat he talks about these issues. There are three things that usuliyin and they talk about which is another fi ma'alat al-af'al am asad al-dara'i wa fathiha and al-hiyal in the chapters of al-ijtihad. Sheikh Hussam Tamim in his kitab Bayan al fi Butlan al-Tahlil he expands on it in great detail Shaltib in his Muwaffaqat he talks about it looking at the ultimate goal of things. Fiqh al-wasail is a is a fundamental matter in our religion. So today when we look at football the means that is taken and the things that happen inside there can we then just say oh my objectives are very good mm. i'm trying to reach a good objective inshallah ta'ala i think that's what we're going to uh, we're going to talk about inshallah ta'ala now okay let me take a little bit of time just to summarize that and i'm going to try and do it off memory so correct me if i go wrong anywhere but i think some of the people watching at home they might get an indication where this podcast is going now we haven't mentioned the ruling on it and we're not going to do that until we come to the end inshallah and it's important for anybody who really wants to understand this issue and do it justice that they watch the podcast from the beginning to the end and they don't just watch parts of it or aspects of it um i think the first thing i say is that football has become such a norm in human life I've personally never heard any kind of Islamic speakers talk about football. It's certainly not in a negative way anyway, especially in the English world. I think it's happened in the Arab world, but it's not happened in the English world. So this is a new concept for a lot of the people who are watching at home. This is the first time they're thinking about this. Just like I mentioned before when we spoke about it yesterday and that conversation would end up two hours long. It could have just, we could have just got the cameras out. We could have just done the hazard yesterday, but it was really a, a thought provoking conversation. So I'd encourage everyone to watch this, who's watching this, keep an open mind. to keep an open mind to hear what's being said from both sides because there's certain things that you say that I still don't agree with mm-hmm. and there are other things that I can understand where you're coming from so keep an open open mind throughout the conversation is the first thing I'd say now let's just quickly go through your introduction you mentioned that the purpose that we've been created is for gain beneficial knowledge and righteous actions and I don't think any muslim at home would be dis- would be uh, disagree with that to be honest with you and you also mentioned that there are things like loving the dunya excessively that can come in the way of that again I don't think that's a point of contention for anybody watching at home bi al kareem second thing you mentioned is now we're talking about uh, football itself is that right and it's how it's got a co- it's, it's like a you call it madhab fikri or ideology or something like this right production. which i definitely like to go into more because the points that you mentioned the three points for example has people who support it as in put money in it invest in it the news are talking about it which is a second point and the third point it has fans and followers i would definitely agree football has all those things but i also don't see the the, the issue here so again in islamically uh, i think you know the same could be said about the business world accountancy has people invest in it the news are talking about it people who follow it i wouldn't say accountancy is anything problematic but we're going to come to that we're definitely going to come to that inshallah so that's the second point you mentioned if i'm correct, if i'm correct third point was the importance of yeah and i mentioned the second thing is yeah. also it's a, it's a tawut asri it's which one means of the that we have today yeah okay that definitely needs that is definitely anti-islamic and that's something that we definitely need to talk about inshallah um and how you came to that conclusion third thing is the importance of commanding the good and forbidding the evil again i don't think anyone has an issue with that this sometimes and i think this is a reason you brought it in the introduction sometimes when people command the good and forbid the evil it might be about a particular issue that 
hasn't been spoken about before in a particular language like this issue, for example, or it might be something that has just become so normal and so accepted that it's a bit of a bit of a bit a bitter pill to swallow. It's a bit like a bit strange, but that doesn't dismiss the importance of it, and it doesn't dismiss the discussion either. The discussion still needs to be had and needs to be listened to from both sides, and it needs to be listened with an open heart and an, an attentive mind. Inshallah. Fourth thing you mentioned, you're gonna to have to remind me. What was the fourth thing you mentioned in your introduction? So the fourth one was fiqh al-waqti Yeah, that's it. So this is the entire podcast, really understanding what football is, because we can't make a ruling on it and nobody can make a ruling on it. Even those who believe that Aslan is permissible, we can't make a ruling on it unless we fully understand what it is. And then the final point, again, a very key point, is that if the means to something is haram, then the, end goal, the ends don't justify the means, essentially is the easy way of putting it. So yes, some people might have good intentions for the reason why they want to watch football they might want to or play football even but if those means are haram which again we're not saying they are yet we're going to talk about it throughout this podcast then obviously it doesn't matter about your intention the ends don't justify the means that was a summary of your introduction now we're going to talk about what i'd like to do at least is really talk about football itself and really get into the detail what do you believe that is problematic because i think by this time people have understanding that you believe football is problematic what particular things in football do you believe to be problematic so the, there's 41 reasons wow so the first one inshallah ta'ala i'm going to go through 41 reasons some people might think some of the some of these reasons might not be convincing to them again i don't uh, feel like i want to force convincing people if it convinces you good alhamdulillah if it doesn't and I'm sure there are other points I've mentioned that you think, okay, that's 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 a point. And it's enough for me to just find one of these to say that uh I'll give the I'll give the ruling later. Yeah. But if I if we find and you agree with me that one of these are present from the 41, if we get the chance to go through every every one of them. Inshallah. And also I want to distinguish between, I don't want to focus on two things at the same time. I want to focus on watching football. I don't want to spend too much time talking about playing football. Okay, That's fine. another discussion. That's another ruling, another discussion. Okay. I'm talking about watching football. Okay. Okay, where a person sits back, takes a remote control, screen in front of them, and they watch a game. Okay, That's fine. the one I want to focus on. Okay? Again, I know not every single person is going to fall under the, the categories I've, I've met, I have mentioned. Okay? Because somebody might just be watching it and he's not a supporter. doesn't sure. know sitting there because his family are watching it he might not fall under some certain sure. things but I'm sure he's going to fall into other things inshallah. and we have to talk really about a general rule so you might mention something that is present in majority of people who watch football but there might be some exceptions of people who don't fall into that like you mentioned but it, we have to talk generally otherwise we can't go into every single specific person okay mm -hmm. so the first one I want to talk about is the absence of al-wala' wal bara okay loving and hating in our religion, the word concept of al-wala wal bara is a aslum min usuli the deen. Our religion, one of the th most powerful things it stands on is allegiance and disassociation. Association and disassociation. Okay. That's one of the things our religion stands on. And a person's iman does not really come into place if he doesn't come with this. Okay, Allah says in the Quran, لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين Allah ta'ala in this verse he says to us لا يتخذ المؤمن لا يتخذ المؤمنين Allah says لا يتخذ المؤمنون sorry that a believer does not take al-kafirina the disbelievers awliya min dun al-mu'minina they do they do not take them as close allies besides the believers وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ And anyone who does that takes the non-Muslims as their close allies فَلَيْسَ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِي شَيْءٍ Nothing wow. to do with Allah SubhanAllah إِلَّا أَنْ تَتَّقُوا مِنْهُمْ تُقَى Unless there is a duress and coercion it's a different issue Then Allah says وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَ Allah warns you from himself وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَصِيرِ And everybody's going to return back to Allah Taala. The great scholar Ibn Jarir al-Tabari in his tafsir of this ayah he says Rahimahullah, man ittakhadha al-kuffara a'wanan wa ansaran wa dhuhuran yuwaliihim ala deenihim. Anyone who takes the kuffar, supporters, aiders, and all of that, okay, because of their religion, wa yudahiruhum ala al-muslimin, and yani, gives them aid and support over the Muslims. فَلَيْسَ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِي شَيْءٍ This person's got nothing to do with Allah. Yani he's a disbeliever. Is this just talking about aspects of war or is this general? It's general. 
So sometimes it becomes disbelief, and sometimes it can be less than that. Ibn Jalil al-Tabri here, he says, من اتخذ الكفار أعوانا وأنصارا وظهورا he says يواليهم على دينهم so if it's على دينهم it's كفر بالله على الله okay takes a person على الله ويظاهرهم and he aids them على المسلمين over the Muslims فليس من الله في شيء he's got nothing to do with it يعني قد بري من الله he's free from Allah وبري الله منه and Allah is free from him بارتدادي because of his apostasy والدخول في الكفر because he entered into disbelief إلا أن تتقوا منهم تقاء unless إلا أن تكون في سلطانهم unless you are under their سلطان sure. فتخافهم على أنفسكم so you fear for yourself فتظهروا لهم الولاية بألسنتكم and so because you're scared of them and you're under them and you're frightened you show it from your tongue that you support them وتضمروا العداوة but in your heart you have animosity and hate for them and his kalam رحمه الله it carries on Ibn Kathir says something very similar regarding that ayah. Rahimahullah, rahmatan, wasi'ah. I don't want to go into all the ayat in the Quran that talk about this issue. Qadiyatul wala wal bara'ah. As you can see, it's a very serious issue. It's an issue that can lead to apostasy. Now, is it apostasy in all of its forms? No, 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 no. It's not. But it's haram at the very least. So the bare, very, very, yani the bare minimum it can become is that it's يعني sin of course that Allah تبارك وتعالى prohibited and it is also it can be kufr أصغر okay it can be what kufr أصغر now does football have this concept of al just before we go into that because honestly I think al wala wal is something that we should spend a little bit I know we've got a lot to talk about but something we should spend a little bit more time on just because I think it really deserves a podcast in of itself and I think you know we said that before as well but particularly to this topic of football it is really important. I can understand why you started with it. What are the other evidences? The other ayat in the Quran? I know you said you don't really want to mention them. Don't Allah want to go to them. Allah says that they وأيدهم بروح منه ويدخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن أولئك حزب الله إلا إن حزب الله هم المفلحون الله says لا تجد you're not gonna find قوما أي people يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله who show love towards who من حاد الله ورسوله those who have enemies of Allah and his messenger كفار okay, okay. ولو كانوا آباءهم even if they're your fathers okay. أو أبناءهم أو your children أو إخوانهم أو your brothers أو عشيرتهم أو even your family members أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان and I carries on الله says in another آية يا الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا اليهود والنصارى أولياء بعضهم أولياء بعض ومن يتولهم منكم فإنه منهم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين فترى الذين في قلوبهم مرض يسارعون فيهم يقولون نخشى أن تصيبنا دائرة فعسى الله أن يأتي بالفتح فعسى الله أن يأتي بالفتح أو أمر من عنده فيصبح على ما أصروا في أنفسهم نادمين Allah here he mentions subhanahu wa ta'ala in that verse to the believers Allah is talking to the mu'minin he says ya iladina amanu those of you who believe la tatakhidu al-yahuda wa al-nasara awliya don't take them as allies and as friends close friends and people you love don't why ba'aduhum awliya wa ba'ad they are allies to one another wa man yatawallahum minkum anyone who does that from amongst the believers fa innahu minhum is from them inna Allah la yahdi al-qawm al-zalimin then after what does Allah say? فَتَرَى الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ You will see those who have illnesses in their hearts. The word مَرَض فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَض in everywhere in the Quran is referring to the munafiqin except one place. One place. Did Allah use the فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَض and it wasn't referring to the munafiqin, it's referring to Muslims. Which is which one? وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتُكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةُ الْأُولَى وَأَقِبْنَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتِينَ الزَّكَاةَ وَأَطِعْنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا نَوْلًا يا نساء النبي لستن كأحد من النساء إن تقيتون فلا تخطأن بالقول فيطمع الذي في قلبه مرض وقلنا قولا معروفا صورة الحزام That one is referring to the people the believers as well it's not the munafiqin specifically okay. Everywhere other, other place in the Quran where you look at it if you realize if you see Allah saying those whose hearts have illnesses it's munafiqin so here Allah says فترى الذين في قلوبهم مرضا أي منافق Allah is referring to those people who take the non-Muslims as allies and close friends Allah is referring to them as what? What is he referring to them as? He's referring to them as people who are hypocrites and munafiqin. يعني the Quran, لقد كان لك الله سبحانه قد كانت لكم أسوة حسنة في إبراهيم والذين معه إذ قالوا لقوم إن برع منكم ومما تعبدون من دون الله كفرنا بكم وبدأ بيننا وبينكم العداوة والبغضاء أبدا حتى تؤمنوا بالله وحده. يعني إبراهيم أريد. 
and freeing himself from the non-Muslims yeah. of his of his time. And it's sad because these people are enemies to Islam, but yeah. we show them, we show them. So I think that's, that was important. And all we've done is, you've mentioned the Quran. I'm sure there's many ahadith that talk about this topic as well. But from the Quran, we've pro proven that even just the aspect of taking non-Muslims uh -huh. as friends, as close friends, as allies, you're basically either falling into ithm or fisq, uh -huh. at the very least, or nifaq or kufr. Uh -huh. And when you're taking them over and above the Muslims, it's even worse. Uh -huh. Now we're going to talk about whether you find that in football. Uh -huh. And f one of the highest branches of Iman is what? Loving for Allah's sake and hating for Allah's yeah. sake, right? Aw thaqu'ura al-Iman, al-hubbu fi Allah, wal-bughu fi Allah. Ibn Abi Shayba narrated it, and Imam al-Tabarani narrated it. Yani the, pro the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu salam, the highest branch of al-Iman is what? To love for Allah's sake, to hate for Allah's sake. So it's not a small part of our religion. No, it's a very not. fundamental part of our religion with many different evidences that indicate towards it. Okay. The Prophet also said, Hadith Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, man ahabba fi Allah, anyone who loves for the sake of Allah, wa abghada fi Allah, and he hates somebody for the sake of Allah, wa wala fi Allah, and shows allegiance for Allah's sake, wa ada fi Allah, and he hates somebody for the sake of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, fa inna ma tunalu walayatu Allahi bithalik. That person will attain through that the wilayah of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. وَلَيَّجِدْ عَبْدٌ طَعْمَ الْإِيمَانِ A person will not taste the sweetness of al-Iman. وَإِنْ كَثُرَتْ صَلَاةُ Even if his prayers are a lot. وَصَوْمُهُ وَصَوْمُهُ And his fasting is a lot. حَتَّى يَكُونَ كَذَلِكَ Unless he's until he becomes like that. وَقَدْ صَارَتْ مُؤَاخَاتُ النَّاسِ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا وَذَلِكَ لَا يُجْدِ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ شَيْ so someone might say these hadith show the virtue of it. It doesn't mean it's a sin if you, if you do it, but it just shows the virtue. But the ayat of the Quran were very, very clear that it is a sin. It's a very, very serious sin as well. Okay. So now what, what are we finding in the, in, the com, in, in the football game now? Yeah. We're finding people loving non-Muslims. He's a football player. They love him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the football game, he does a Christian sign when he's coming, when, yeah. he, when, he, when he scores. True. No problem. I had no problem. Some of the football games or teams, they have a Christian sign on there. On their, fl on their badge or the flag, and The yes. person's wearing those things. Yeah. He supports that team yeah. who have those things. Okay? Allahu Akbar. Um, a person supports Arsenal, for example. Another one supports Manchester or Chelsea. They're two brothers in the same house, same from the same mother. Hmm. Each brother has his love and allegiance for his team. Yeah. He hates his brother or for supporting that. Yeah, team. I wouldn't say he hates him, but uh, yeah, yeah okay. Guy. I've seen brothers who stop oh. talking to each other because wow. of the game. Wow. Okay. Have you never seen them? No, I, I, I think this is a very strong point. I have my own things to contribute as well. But uh, go ahead. I don't want people to think that you just jump into extremes. You just hate. Oh, you know, hate. I, hate. I, I, hate's I, a strong I, I, word. I like. I like your input. Do you think? Do you have seen brothers fighting over? Yeah, I have. I think. I think. See, when I mentioned at the start that when we had this discussion and even this podcast, I actually wanted it to be an open discussion. It's a really a big confrontation. But I mentioned earlier that there's certain things that I disagree with you on this point, and there's certain things that I agree with you or on this topic rather. Huh. This particular point for me is something I completely agree with coming from a background where uh, to be honest with you I was very heavily invested in football when I was younger I'm talking 10 to 14 years ago because uh, I, I say 14 because I did the maths earlier and I just that's why the, the number is exact but I went to university and I chose my university based on my football team I supported Manchester United as so I'm only going to university in Manchester I don't care what other university I'm just going to go there so I went to university in Manchester I worked at the stadium Stadium's called Old Trafford. I was working there as a steward. Do you know the guys with the jackets? They watch it. I was one of those guys. After that, to be honest with you, my I haven't really followed it too much because I got busy with other things and I came into the Dean a bit more, alhamdulillah. But even now, occasionally I'll still hear about football. And I, one thing that I would say about this particular point is I know myself, and again, there were football fans who were even bigger than me, bigger than me, but I know myself that sometimes when I met someone and I met, might meet someone called Steve, a non-Muslim, and he's a Man United fan. I said, who do you support? He said, Man United. I'm like, yeah, that's it. In the same conversation, I see someone, Abdullah, and he supports Arsenal. I said, who do you support? He said, Arsenal. Like, Arsenal, really? Oh, God, get out of here, man. That now, I've had a non-Muslim and a Muslim in front of me, and I've certainly got something in, in my heart more towards a non-Muslim. No, Definitely no, this no, happens. No. I'm telling you this happens. I know the reality of football. You've done a lot of research into it, the theory, but I can, inshallah, give you the practical. I'm telling you this happens. I know maybe it's you don't know. Side, it's the, side benefit. Yeah. What's the difference between Manchester, Man United and uh, Manchester City? Okay, it's funny because when you earlier said Manchester, I was thinking, oh, Manchester, there's two teams in Manchester. You can't just leave it unrestricted. Ma they're both in the same city. Okay, so the Manchester is one city. It has two teams. Man United playing red, Man City playing blue. 
that's the difference you need to know for now. Man United are better than Man City. Some people say in the past now, Man City. There's a lot of, but it, I, when I lived in Manchester at university, I was there. I saw the tension between the two seats. So it's a sense of physical fights sometimes, which again, I'm sure is a point maybe we'll cover later on. But physical fights. I'm telling you, I've seen, I've seen physical fights. The other thing that comes in this, in this issue, again, you can't deny it. I don't think anyone can deny it. And again, we're not saying this applies to everybody. Someone might watch football without supporting yeah, anything, yeah, but I'm yeah. saying the general rule for most people, you might have a penalty where the other team are taking the penalty. Let's say, for example, Man United are playing Liverpool. Mo Salah, who's a Muslim, he's taking the penalty against my team. I'm going to make dua to Allah. Please let him miss. Please let him miss. Please let him miss. The, the goalkeeper's a, a kafir. He's a kafir goalkeeper. I'm saying, please let him miss. Please, because it's my team, right? I don't want my team to lose. So now you're making dua against a Muslim. And again, this is not a, a, okay, people might not make dua, but people might want him to miss. You want something evil to happen to a Muslim. You want him to miss. Why? Because the goalkeeper is a kafir, but it's because of your team. It's your team. You can't let that team go. It's like we hear back in the day, the postcode wars. Like you know, The funny, the, the, the sad thing that I take from the story is you're making dua for a guy who is, yeah. If he scores, he gets points and he he's, he's, he gets higher in his position and, you know, he gets more famous and... He gets money or whatever, yeah. What it's do you job. get? Make it do it's, just, it's, it's your team. That's what it goes down to. It's your team. You feel good when they win and you feel depressed when they lose. You don't even know if you're going to Jannah. You don't know where you're going to be when you go into your grave. You're concerned with somebody else's shooting. This, this for me, it's like... Like, I can't see... What, yeah, you can't wrap your head around it. You can't, can't understand it. You're wasting your your energy into making dua for a football game. I've seen people who say I woke up Qiyamul Layl for just like, for my team. <laughs> Wallahi, I've seen this. Yeah. Like honestly, I'm not I've literally never watched a football game in my life. But alhamdulillah I'm not gonna watch it now. But what I've seen from people and what I my research has done I've seen, you you guys told me yesterday the other day England lost, right? Yeah. When you told me I went I went and I looked into it. I looked at people and yeah, I mean, people I know, family members. I made some phone calls. How are you? Is everything right? Are you sad? <laughs> I know they football play. They love their fo- they love football. Shahid, wallahi, depressed, sad. I'm gonna come to all of those points. Inshallah, ta'ala. I used yeah, to. I mean, cr- I used my to... cousins was like, how on earth did England allow kids to shoot the penalty? penalty? What were they thinking? Hmm. Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, he's so invested into it. And some of I mean, his family members need him. He's, he could have gone shopping for his mom that day and got him, got her food. Yeah, I and mean, there are more important things in your life you can be more preoccupied in doing. Yeah, I think there's definitely, and again, we're going to come to all of these arguments, and they're going to when you put them together, it's very strong. But I also don't want people to think that yes, of course, there's always something better. We're talking about father and mafdul. Something is better. I agree. I could have been doing better than watching football. But we're talking about the issue of haram. We're talking about fisq, nifaq, kufr. We're talking about loving a disbeliever over a Muslim. Now that team that you support, they don't just have Muslim players. They also have Muslim fans, right? That support the other team. You're loving these people. Your Kafir goalkeeper more than the Muslim players, the Muslim fans, you want them to, ultimately they're going to be sad if they lose as well. Let me tell you something. Let's look at the Italian revert and the English revert. The okay. reason I'm saying that is because you Pakistanis go back to Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> that's your country. <laughs> Somalis go back to their country, that's their yeah. countries. Um, uh, everyone go back to their country. So no one's really uh, uh, owns the UK. Okay. Let's talk about the English reverts. Okay. 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 So you got an English revert. And you got an Italian river. Hmm. When this, the game was going on, both of them are Muslims. Yeah, okay. They're both allegiance are to, to, to their country and that, to, to their teams. Definitely. Are they, are they going to have yeah, any disagreement and something towards each other yeah. because of the game? Yeah. Uh, I mean, ultimately, they want their team to win. They know if their team wins, he's going to be upset. So ultimately, they want their Muslim brother to feel upset. So yeah, there's there's no escaping that. That's why I think this point is particularly strong. I mean, I would tell you, I used to cry if my team lost. This is, I used to be, I used to cry if they won as well. Tears of joy. <laughs> I was, I was so invested in it, so serious in it that I'm telling you, if I met a Muslim and I met a Kafir and the Kafir supports my team, automatically I like him more. Uh, um, that's that's the truth of my situation. Again, I can't speak for everybody, and maybe people weren't invested in it that much. But anytime you support a team, ultimately there's something in here where you want Muslims on the other side to not be happy 
Um, so this point, I think in particular, especially with the ayats that you mentioned, again, people have to remember, we're talking about football, but now we have the ayat from the Quran. They're really directly telling you that you can't take non-Muslims as, uh, as allies over Muslims. I know we have football where inevitably that, that does happen. Let's say you're a player now. Let's say you're playing a professional football match, for example. You're in a team with non-Muslims. On the other team, there's a Muslim. Of course, you have to be closer to your team. You have to... It's 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 a very serious issue that I think I've never thought about previously. In all in all honesty, I never thought about it this deep. Um, but it's something that's very very serious. So, uh, this, the next point is atashabuhu bil kuffar, imitating the non-Muslims. Mm. People watch football, imitate the football player, the cl the clothing he he wears, the haircut he has. They follow him and they imitate him. This takes us back to the issue of al wala wal bara, which we were talking about before. Allah says, Yeah, Lidina Mulla to take the Yahuda and Nasara Ulia, Baldum Ulia, Baldum, and Mayatu Allah Minku, for in no minum in the Malay del Homo Valim. Yah, Lidina Mulla to take the Yahuda and Nasara Ulia, Baldum, Ulia, or Baldin, or Mayatu Allah Minku, for in no minum in the Malay del Homo Valim, if at a Lidina Fikulu be Maradun, you say, or the Fim Yahulu, and Raksha and to see Mana Daira, for as Allah and Yatia Bil Fatri, or Amrim in Indi, for you speak Rala Masaru Fia and Fusim Nadim. They imitate him. Remember when David Beckham, I remember yeah, yeah, David famous. Beckham's haircut was a certain way. Everybody's school was the same. I was like, why has everybody's got the same haircut? They like they cut the sides. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Mohican is called. Mohican, yeah. yeah, they did that. He cut his hair with everyone. Yeah, it? it's true. Does it not fall under the hadith of Tashabbah bi qawmin fa minhum? Anyone who imitates the peoples from them. Hadith Ahmed narrated on Abu Dawood. So again, I think people would probably understand that definitely this happens in football. Now I want to bring the ayat and the hadith, like you mentioned one of them. Yeah. Are there anything, uh, anything else the that Prophet you have? The Prophet said, you will follow. We've, we've done a po podcast on this. Yeah, session. we did, we did. Yeah. Like, you will follow man kana qablakum, the path of those who came before you. Shibran, bishibrin, wa dhira'am, bidhira'in. You follow them hand span, arm span. Hatta law dakhalu juhra dabbin, until if they enter the hole of a lizard, you will follow them into it. Are you talking about the Christians and the Jews? Faman, the Prophet said, who else? Bukhari and Muslim both narrated it and the wording was the wording of Imam Muslim. So, so this yeah. hadith, Ibn Taymiyyah said, هذي, هذي الأحد, hadith man tashabha bi qawmi fawa minhum. Ibn Taymiyyah said, the bare minimum that this hadith can be is, an yaqtadi tahrima tashabhu bi. The bare minimum is that it's haram. It can, and it can go as far as kufr. Again, similar to the point before. Yeah. So what if someone says on the podcast they watch on, on our podcast, you mentioned that it's only tashabbuh if you, you take something that is unique for the non-Muslims. That haircut that David Beckham had. Everybody knew it was David Beckham's haircut. Yeah, okay. So, if, so this is an important point to mention. If you're following it because of this individual who's I a know. kafir. I know. That's what everybody, like that's why everybody. Of course they were, uh, definitely, know. definitely. Even people now when they score, go, go, when they score a football, when they score a uh, uh, a goal yeah. they, they celebrate it exactly like the the, the, the yeah, cel celebrated it no. so even though it's got nothing to do with their religion it's nothing to do with it. it's just a pastime just a hobby just a football just a haircut it's a norm so remember he said if the more norms yeah. becomes known for a certain people it becomes a shabbu in them okay the this this point might come later on i don't know if it does and you can tell me and we can we, we can talk about it later but i think within this really when you're talking about following someone's haircut mm -hmm. or following someone's celebration it can really reach a higher level than that. Okay. Where you take someone as an you have posters of them on their wall, on your wall. And this is definitely the case. I don't know if you, have you got this later or you want to cover it now? The, this issue of idolization and really taking yeah, them to. Yeah, we're going to come to the role model. You, you want to take it later or you want to do it now? It's up to you. We'll do it later if you want. We could, yeah, we can take okay, it later. Okay, no problem, Shalom. The next one we have is, which is also going to be touched on here, is Yahya'u da'wa al jahiliya wal asabat al asabiyat al qawmiya, al asabiyat al qawmiya, nationalism. And, uh, People believing لا يسألون أخاهم حين يندبهم في النائبات على ما قال برهانا. Like an excessive allegiance to the extent that the person, يعني, he takes that football player, sticks him in his wall, okay, which is the concept of idolization. But you're talking about supporting a country, nationalism. Yeah, calling to that particular team, yeah. trying to even some people they say, please man, leave Arsenal, man. So he becomes a dairy caller to <laughs> his, his team. Yeah, yeah. And he's happy. He's like, my brother used to support Arsenal. Alhamdulillah, now Allah guided him to Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. nah, well, like, no, these true, are conversations yeah. you hear as, it, as, people, as, as people are talking. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahabas one time, they fought against themselves. You have to remember mm. the, the word Muhajirin and Ansar is mentioned in the Quran. Yeah. It is. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين تبعون بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Allah mentioned the word مهاجرين والأنصار. But when they use that, 
to fight one another and cause the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they fought against each other. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said, Ya lil muhajirin, Ya lil ansar, they called him. Oh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Abi da'wa al-jahiliyyati wa ana bayna adhurikum. Are you going to use jahili callings? Muhajirin ansar is a shari term. Not just a shari term, it's a praiseworthy term. Yeah, yeah. shari meaning Allah yeah. ta'ala used it. And he praised the, the, the praiseworthy yeah. manner. But when they use that for, yani, dispute and argumentation and conflict and, 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 and animosity when it was used in that way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Abi da'wa al-jahiliyyat wa'ana bayna adhurikum are you going to use a jahili callings and I'm amongst you da'uha the Prophet said fa'innaha khabitha in another word the Prophet said da'uha fa'inna muntinna Bukhari Muslim both narrated it and here you are arsenal arsenal you're chanting it so what you're saying is that again to break it down for the people that these two terms which I mentioned in the Quran in a praiseworthy manner when the Muslims at that time they actually took those terms and they used it to create a bit of a separation dispute argumentation whatever you want to call it yeah. the Prophet said this in Atul Jahliya yeah, now we have terms which aren't even mentioned in the Quran Arsenal Manchester United Chelsea Fulham these, these terms aren't even mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah people are clinging on to these names and they're using it to dispute. Can I, so I honestly, what, one thing I want to do during this podcast is really, because you might do your research on a theory and you might come across something and say, look, this is what happens. I really want to reflect, has that happened? Does that happen? Have I seen it happen? And yeah, I think if I'm being honest and truthful, yeah, that definitely does happen. You have two Muslims, he supports Chelsea, you support Arsenal and you'll be like, why are you with Chelsea, man? Why are you with Chelsea? And that term itself, those terms are now being used to create separation between the Muslims. Okay, I, yeah, that's another point. I, I, also, do you, don't you think this destroys the concept of in akramakum, in Allah atqaqum, the best from amongst you is the one who's righteous? Okay, what do you mean yeah, by that in taqiyun wa fadirun shaqiyun. We mentioned that before. There might be a football player. He's a Muslim. Whether, however sinner he is, however what he's doing is wrong or whatever it may be. Like he's a Muslim at the end of the day. He's not a kafir. Yeah. This mu'min or this Muslim, in all way, form or shape, he's your Muslim brother. Yeah. But you're going to prefer another football player over him and praise him. Yeah, true. And go overboard in praising him over him. Sometimes you might even speak about him, and, which I'm going to come to inshallah ta'ala. In akramakum, in dalai atqaqum, doesn't matter to you. For you, the akramakum, in dalai atqaqum is the best in the football game. It's not the best, the best to Allah, it's the best in the game. That's the best one to you. Yeah, I think this really needs to be covered when we talk about uh, the idolization because someone might say, look, I'd say Ronaldo is the best footballer. Mm-hmm. I've never seen he's the most, I've never seen he's the best person. Mm-hmm. i never seen he's the best, I'm not praising him, I'm saying he's the best footballer, it's a fact. That's what, he's better than the Muslim players. No problem, I can say that, but we're talking about football ability. I'm not saying he's the most pious. I'm not saying he's the best out of all of us. I'm saying he's the best footballer. So I'm restricting it. What's wrong with that? This is what brings about love. And allegiance and admiration for him. When you bring up someone, automatically you're at your. I want to meet this guy. I want to be in his presence. He means a lot to me. This guy was the one who shot the goal for our my team. By default, this is this guy. That's what they say, right? They get so excited. This guy, <laughs> yeah. they scream. That's what they say. Look, the prophet said in a hadith, "Inna shaytan qad ayasa." Shaytan has given up. And يعبد المصلون في جزيرة العرب that the Muslims worship him in the جزيرة العرب. Hmm. Shaitan gave up. So what does he do? ولكن في التحريش بينهم the thing is going to cause is division between the people. Shaitan has that he's going to come through this game and he's going to bring people to hate one another animosity. You're bringing about يعني which brings me to another point now hurling insults. Some places even killing one another because of games. What happened between Egypt and Algeria when they played? Some people were killed. Are these not extreme examples though? It doesn't happen normally. No okay, one gets killed really. People get beaten up, right? No, yeah, yeah, there are there are football hooligans. But again, this is a really important point now, and I think this is something that is going to come up time and time again in the podcast. Don't judge football by the actions of fans. For example, Muslims, some Muslims drink. Well, they, well, that's the, what the game does to you. Apparently. Not necessarily. Some, yeah. It's got nothing to do with it. The game yeah. said, don't do this. They penalize the teams. If no, someone does that. The people who watch it, yeah. who are watching the game, this is what the game does to you. This game does this to you. But uh, for ex- but that's the actions of some fans. We don't. Football doesn't condone it. It doesn't say it's good. It doesn't say it's right. Football is free from it. It's just some fans do it. I'm saying to you, are you telling me people who watch this game, who are invested? Remember, there are people I said at the beginning who are not fans, yeah. who might just sit there because family members are watching it and etc. They've got other things that, inshallah, I'm going to speak to them about. But the people who are fans, who support it, are you telling me they don't say insults to another person? Okay, I'm saying, yes, it can happen. But isn't that the action of a fan that's wrong? Just like a Muslim drinking, you don't attach that to Islam. No, if this is happening on a, on a very high number, 
very high number, you question why this is happening. This Even is if football says, the Premier League say, don't do it, you're not allowed to do no, it. It's, it's not what they say or do. It's Islam like, says drinking is not, uh, not uh, permissible. Yeah. You have a Muslim who drinks. If a Kafir sees that, he's going to say, you Muslims drink. We're going to say to him, don't judge Islam by the actions of Muslims. So why can't a football player say to you, don't no, judge I'm football? Judging, I'm not judging the football game. I'm judging the, the, the game is bigger than the, 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 the FIFA. They can say what they want on their board. Don't do this, don't do this. But the game does that by default. Mm. The game does this to the person, I'm saying. Playing makes people insult one another, name call one another. Because it's the nature of competi competi competition. Your team lost and your, your brother will come and laugh in your face. There's another point, a few points I want to speak about. People get very aggressive. They insult one another, name calling. You have to question if this is be happening by so many people. And you look, cigarettes say harms you. It harms your health. Don't you, does it not say it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. And he says it's going to kill you, right? Yeah. But there's still people are still buying it. That's the case. Well, Ladina Yuduna al Mu'minina, Wal Mu'minati, Begayri Maktasabu, Fakadihtamalu, Bhutan, and Wathman Mubina. Fakadihtamalu, Bhutan, and Wathman Mubina. Like, kids are being disrespectful to their parents after the game is lost. Being very يعني, disobedient, يعني, insulting sometimes their siblings who don't watch the game. Your sister who doesn't watch the game has got nothing to do with it. You're insulting her because your team lost. The Prophet said from the greatest things, from the greatest major sins is a person to curse his own parents. Hmm. So then Sahaba said, Rasulullah, can somebody insult his own parents? He said, يسب أبا الرجل. He insults the, the parents of somebody else. فيسب أباه إذا he insults your you insult someone's parents and then he insults your parents. ويسب أمه فيسب أمه. You insult his parents, he parents. So let me let me understand this because I think I might have understood it. I think you make a strong point. I just want to make sure the people at home understand it as well. You're saying these actions of insults and you know arguments of vile speech or whatever. You're saying these the game has caused this. What you mean by that is if there was no football. Or if the, if the person wasn't watching football at that time, he wouldn't just randomly shout insults. No. That's what you're saying. No. Whereas the example that I gave, which was Qiyas Ma'al Fariq, which is a Muslim drinking alcohol, that Muslim is going to drink alcohol whether Islam tells him or not. It's got no direction, but it's, it's got sure. no link. Is that sure. what you're saying? Yes, sure. So I'm with you now. I understand what you're saying now. That person who insults his Muslim brother, if there was no football match, he wouldn't be doing that. Mm. It's only the football who's caused it. Okay, that's a, that's it's, a fair it's point. It's a causing factor to make people very aggressive. ليس المؤمن بالطعان ولا باللعان ولا بالفاحش ولا بالبذيء. A mu'min is not like that. So if you keep seeing yourself, and you see, I'll tell you something. There are a few people when you hang around with, they make you become a certain mindset, right? They, mm. they, you, they bring up the worst out of you. Yeah. So you avoid those people. They might say to you, bro, listen, I'm here to care for you. They can say nice words, but you know when you sit with them, they always take you to a place where your iman reduces. You can't be in their presence. Mm -hmm. Those type of people, what are you told to do? You're told to leave their surroundings and not be around them. So a believer, one of these characteristics is People are insulting the television. Bro, the guy can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Your name calling yeah. a football player. You, this, you're, yeah. this, you're, this is saying to the football player. He can't hear you and you're getting tired and you're stressed and you're frustrated. And look the language you're using. And now it gets worse when the football is a Muslim. And you're sorting the Backbiting as well can come into this. Which we're right? going to gonna come to, inshallah. Okay. And again, I just want to reiterate, some people might watch this and might say that I don't really do that. I just like to watch football and just relax. I don't get aggressive or anything. Again, these points might not apply to everyone, but they apply to some people and some points would definitely apply to everyone. Right you now. can't escape certain aspects, which we're going to come to as Another well. Another thing that we find is these football games, once it finishes, there are a lot of mischiefs and, and, and harms that are caused by the fans and the supporters after the game is over. Look at today, look at when England game played. I went into the news, go to yeah. BBC, go to YouTube, check it out. Leicester Square, what happened? What happened? Oh, the, uh, I think, the yeah. The littering that happened, yeah. the football fans, they did. Akhi billah ya alik, wallahi, we used to be, sometimes, we used to go to Duru's, right? Shuyuks have dirs. So, uh, to them, high road, right? We used to go to a masjid in North London, masjid of Sunnah. The sheikhs would do dirs. We're sitting there, we're taking notes, we're benefiting, we're learning. It's a football night. Right there is Tottenham Hotspur. Uh -huh. the, after the dars, the shiuks, they say, brothers, sisters, uh, in the middle of the dars sometimes, in the middle of the dars, they say, sisters, leave now, before they come out of the game. 
because if Tottenham have lost, I think I saw a even statistic. If they win, even if they win. I thought it was a statistic that when England lose, domestic violence goes up by X percentage or whatever. Even now, you were telling me, right, the other day, the two people who shot for the England football team were two black guys, right? Yeah, three, yeah. Three? Yeah. Three black guys? Yeah, they missed the penalties. So what, what, what's, what was what was it? Say what you were saying. Racism has basically come out as a result of that. Now it's been two days later and people, even on that day, I knew it myself. And my friend told me, he said, I'm worried now. I'm worried. He said that I'm worried that it's going to be racism because five penalty takers, two of them are white, they scored, and now three of them are black, they missed. It's got nothing to do with their race. It's got nothing to do with it. It's, it's a penalty. It's a yeah. But as a result of that, I think, I haven't checked, I haven't seen the news to be honest with you, but someone was telling me that there's been a huge amount of racism in UK. So people, uh, someone, uh, someone even said people have been uh, stabbed. I heard, again, this needs to be checked because I'm going off memory and what I've been told might not be correct. But I heard someone stop. Let's all, take it for now, people can verify. Yeah. Doesn't that bring me to the point I said kidding? It does, yeah, it yeah. does, yeah. Look, look, people get injured, glassed, bottled. I yeah. remember one day I was coming from Fulham and there was a game. I went, I was on a district line and I was wearing my thobe. I have never been terrified those, the way those hooligans were. And Alhamdulillah, in the UK, you wear jackets. Mm. <laughs> and so you look big, yeah? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying you can't see my thobe properly. <laughs> okay. So I had to pull my thobe up. Yeah, I mean, it's, Alhamdulillah, I'm not yeah. a scared type of person. Yeah. I'm not scared, don't worry, don't worry, I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm not scared like that, but it's it's the case. Yeah. Like you ha why you even scare people like that? All because Aradil. Look, Akhi, look. In Islam, there's a policy, as the poet said, "Al qay al qahu fil yami maktufan wa qala lahu iyaq iyaq an tabtala bil ma." You can't throw the people into the ocean and the sea, or the sea or river or a lake or a pond, and say, "Hey, be careful! Don't let the water touch you." <laughs> yeah. it's, it's work like that. We know the way football is. And then we say people don't get angry, don't get violent, don't get aggressive. Don't. It doesn't work like that. Mm. It doesn't work like the game by default is gonna, it's gonna bring this to the table. For most people, yeah. Yeah, yeah most people. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Which and, means in English? Yeah, the, the minority have no rulings. Yeah, yeah. We don't base a ruling on the minority, yeah. we base it on the majority of the people. Yeah. Another harmful thing that it has, Akhi, is man-made laws are applied here in the game. Mm. For example, First of all, Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Okay. Um, the Prophet also said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, لَحَدٌ يُقَامُ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَيْرُ لِأَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ أَنْ يُمْطَرُوا ثَلَاثِينَ صَبَاحًا وفي رواية, إقامة تحد في الأرض خير لأهلها من مطر أربعين ليلة And Imam Al-Nasai, رحمه الله, authenticated as Ibn Maja. The hadith is Hassan, Sheikh Nasir, رحمه الله, authenticated as Sila Hadith Sahiha. Some scholars have weakened it and others. We're coming to an issue known as Hukum Bhairi Ma Anzal Allah, ruling by other than what Allah sent down subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've spoken about this issue. Let's not take it to the because some of its forms can be Kufr Akbar. Some of its forms can be Kufr Akbar. We mentioned the in the forms, podcast we did, yeah. Yeah, we've done a podcast on it, the forms that it can become Kufr Akbar. But what's the bare minimum that you it's Kufr Asghar? It's Kufr Asghar, it's higher than Al Kabir Kabair, major sins. So where are the man made laws in football? I don't understand. Okay, we know in our legislation what do we have in our Sharia, we have ibadat and mu'amalat mm -hmm. in our fiqh books if you look at it when the scholars speak about fiqh they divide it into four or even if you want to say two let's make it four ibadat, ibadat act of worship ibadat then we have uh, al-mu'amalat in this buyur al-nikah al-talaq al-fisq al-khula all of those are in there then you have al-jinayat -al jinayat are crimes that are committed and then al-hudud, which are capital punishments. Okay. Yani punishments for those. Scholars, that's what our our legal Islamic legislation revolves around. It talks okay. about after aqidah, these are the things you study in fiqh. Now, football consists of, a, it's a game of co coming into contact with one another. Sah? Yeah. Okay. When a person attacks another person and breaks a person's bones, hmm. or breaks a person's leg, or get a person gets injured, hmm. or a person puts a finger in a person's eye, do they go to the chapters of Al-Jinayat and Al-Qisas? No, of course, of do they course go not. Al wal 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 qisas, al do, they, do they say that? No. What did they read? Red card, right? Or just go off yeah. the pitch. Yellow card, go off the pitch. Yeah, but that, that's because it's a game. It's, that's the game. That's the, the... But in our religion, we have, it doesn't matter whether it's a game or not. Islam, as you mentioned at the beginning, Islam governs everything. It conforms to everything. Our religion enters every minute thing. You go to the toilet, you're told how to clean yourself. So if you're playing a game, Islam is going to put principles in place for you. So there's no transgression. 
Mm. You could say the same thing as working in a company, for example. My company have certain rules. We have certain rules that we have to abide by. Is so, that now ruling by other than Allah? So what we say is that the ruling is two types. There's idaratun tadhimiyatun bahta. There's administrative rules, which I didn't mention here. For example, how many minutes the games is played for? 90 minutes, right? Yeah. How many people play on each side? 11, 11, sah? Yeah. One goalkeeper, not five goalkeepers. Mm. This is fine. This is this is the okay. nature of the game. That's fine. That doesn't okay. go against the Quran or the Sunnah. How big the football pitch has to be. Yeah. You okay, know what fine. I mean? Whether the middle like who's offside, I'm with yeah, you. any penalty where he's shot from. All of these are administrative. This okay, is fine. Good. Okay. This. With you. We're talking about kawanin to khalifu hukm Allah Ta'ala. They go against the laws of Allah Ta'ala, which the football players are forced to follow. For example, some of them, and I'm going to expand on some of them. For example, some of the laws that yeah, I mean, that they go into is um, the player is made to love his football player team member, even if he's of different religion. It doesn't have to. Of course, yeah, it have to. how are you playing with you? How are you playing? How are you it's just like you? your colleague. You're at work. You've got a non-Muslim colleague. It doesn't mean you have to love him. You work together. Of course, you're working. It's a job for them. They've, some of them even come out saying we don't get along, but it's a job. Le years later, they had big, big rifts. You didn't no, realize these two guys. Two, okay, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Two or three people he might not get along with. No problem. But he can't get along with the entire team members. He has it's, to get along. You, to... What you've mentioned is no different to me in my corporate job, in my company. I've got non-Muslims that I have to work with them. I'm like some of them. No, I don't no, know no, 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 no. You can come into your work and do your work and leave. It's got nothing to do. You know, I never know your, your, your team members and your people you're working with. Here, it's a team thing. I need to know who the striker is. I, the goalkeeper needs to know the... the and, yeah, and it, you have to be... No, I don't agree with this point. You're part of a project in your work. You're part of a team, part of a project. Your job is to deliver this project. Every day you have to work together. I don't see it any different from that. I'll be okay, honest. what about the continuation of playing the football whilst the Salah is going on? Okay, so now what we're saying that footballers, I mean, my work continues. I can play my Salah, right? I have to leave and go for the Salah. Footballers, I'm sure if Mo Salah said, I'm not playing today unless you let me pray my Salah, I'm sure the manager's going to say, okay, we'll let you pray. Is that is that important? What's the problem? No, but Whether they do or not, that's a different no, issue. No, but I'm saying when he's playing on the in the game, yeah. while he's playing in the in the football, he can't just walk off the pitch. If he told, yeah, he could. Whether he does it, that's his choice. I'm not talking about whether he does is it he or allowed not. to? Yes, if he goes to, I, I, I believe, I, I, we were, if I he believe goes, he's not allowed to. Okay, what gives you that understanding? Huh? What was your evidence for that? Which one? That you believe he's not allowed to? Did he tell you? Where did you get that because from? Because these are non-Muslims who are, who are running the... Uh, the, the non-Muslims run my company, but I can still go to pray. Yeah, okay. Well, let's pause your company for now. And let's focus <laughs> on the football game. <laughs> okay. Um, the game, the football game that we're referring, we're playing here is they're the non-Muslims. Yeah. They are the ones who, who put their legislations in place. They're not going to conform to a salah by the Muslims or a festival by the Muslims, or this or that. You know, Arsenal doesn't care about your salah. Manchester does not care about your salah. Chelsea doesn't care about the salah for a Muslim player. You're going to mention to me a powerful football player who's going to be given an exception because of his name and his fame. Maybe there might be a few people. They might say, okay, you know what? You can turn the game over and we will listen to you. Like Messi, for example, he's the, he's the, what, he's the manager of his team, basically. Uh, he's, he's a player. He's a, I think no, he's he's a player, but I mean... But he runs a team. Yeah, he's, he's got that much influence. He's got that much influence, yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. The overwhelming other football players, if they go on that pitch, have to finish off the game. They can't leave and walk I, out of the game. I'm saying, I'm saying with respect, it's a okay. I'm gonna let the viewers. I'm, I disagree. Okay, no, but I'm saying it's an employment contract. So, as I say, I'm a Muslim footballer and I've not got any power. I go to my manager and I say, I need to pray my salah. Look, in UK, are there many, so many Muslims in the UK who are not allowed to pray in their workplace? Uh, no, yeah, there are. are there? I know it because people come to me in the ministry, they ask <laughs> me this question all the time. Is it? I thought it was by law you have to let the Muslims no, pray. No, not necessarily. I thought that was a law. No, it's not. So, uh, okay, fine. Work hours, okay, let's say they're not. Okay. The contract en encompasses, the contract says you have to work from this to this time. There's a lot of companies who don't do that. They won't let you pray. Okay, let's say they you- They pay you for this time. If okay. you want to pray, pray at your break time. Okay. And the salah is actually going out at that time. Especially in winter, you've got so many salah So a lot of people ask us about that. Say, okay. Sheikh, can I still stay at my workplace? Can I, can I, I'm missing my prayer and et cetera. So, okay. So my belief is the football players are like that. So that non, sorry, let's go ahead. So I'm sorry. It's, it's the same kafir over here. This is the kafir over yeah. here. They set rules that don't, con uh, you know, my, you know, the poet, he said, Don't dismiss my point based on an example that may not be agreed upon. The example might not be valid, but you and I both have to agree that this, yeah, I mean, the FA or whatever board yeah, I mean, runs the football game, yeah. They are not Muslims and they are going to have قوانين تشريعية تخالف حكم الله تعالى that the players have to abide by. Whether it be, for example, 
كالزام اللاعبين بكشف عوراتهم forcing or making it a law how the dressing code is going to be so if they have to wear a Christian shirt they have to wear it they have no choice this is the mark of the game they have to wear it for example showing their aura for example traveling to the lands of the disbelievers which I'm going to expand on later which is one of the one of the mahdurat I'm going to mention I'm going to mention when it's allowed when it when it is not with these conditions we're going to discuss that inshallah ta'ala the la'ib the football player has to support and the mas'alatul muwalat one of its definitions is the concept of nusra aiding hmm. the football player in his contract he's told that he has to aid and support his team no there's a few things we have to really we have to define what I'm saying is a footballer is an employer employee sorry he's an employee now that Muslim who's in his workplace he comes to you Sheikh with a question I can't play you're going to say you have to find another job but you wouldn't say the whole accountancy industry is haram Which one? the Muslim who's working as an accountant for example yeah. and he says Sheikh I'm working for a company and the company don't let me pay my salah no for example we would say for example if for example nursing does not allow for example does not allow women to wear hijab It's now become a law for all nursing women. Yeah. Then a shari ruling will be taken on this matter. Yeah. Do you understand my point? Yeah, I'm saying football is not like that. No, I, I, again, when we're divide, we're going to distinguish between uh, me and you playing football by ourselves. That's a discussion. Mate. I'm talking about these main football. Yeah, I'm also talking about. Because remember, them. we're talking about watching football. Um, they have laws that they put in place. This, this. Uh, What's the what's the what's the what's the board? FA, I think the FA. The, so, there's FIFA is the international one. The FA is in England Football Association. The Premier League. The, the, the Premier League are under the FA, I think. They fall under FA. FA. Okay, FA. So the FA are not Muslim. Their ahkam that they pass, that they mention, goes against the Sharia. Okay, push all my examples out of the side. What about making the player wear a T-shirt that has an alcohol pr- promotion on it? What about he has to wear it? He's uh, but this is where you, you're getting something misunderstood. As a player, if, let's say I'm a player. You I have a choice to not wear Yes, because I can go to another team. That's my point. Just like I have a choice to not work for this company. Uh-huh. I'm an accountant. I don't want to work for this company because they're selling alcohol. I'm going to work for this company. As a footballer, this this team has... Okay, no problem. Do you get it? Can I, I play it on a pitch that has alcohol promotion on it? I'm saying you can run from one example to another example. They, there's a law that you can't. Uh, what about when it has the mark? He ha- that fo- does that football player have to still wear it? He has no choice. He still has to wear it. He can leave another team. But I think it's imp- okay. You you made a good point about the pitch, the alcohol, uh, the the gambling promotions around the pitch or whatever. Okay, that's a, that's a valid point. Because now I, you're not talking about a team. You're talking about the industry. So I, all I'm saying to you is, my all my examples might not even be valid. Okay. I'm saying to you because I don't watch the games. To be honest, yeah, I don't know they they haven't given me their contract that they 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 make. But I know they are not Muslims. You and I both know they're not Muslims. So there are definitely qawaneen tashri'atu ghali fi hukum Allah. And I have su'udhan when it comes to a non-Muslim. I believe personally that they are, no one is allowed to leave for prayer. I don't believe they, are, they will allow that. I don't think it's a law for them. They say you can go and pray. Okay. Unless there is pressure from the player where they can't. And, it, and that, that they're doing it for their own maslaha. They're, they're bending the rules uh, for him. The, uh, another mahdur, another يعني, problem in football is kashful awrat. Hmm. People's awrat being seen. Okay? And the awrat that's been seen is يعني, the thighs, for example. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Jarhadu, Ghaddi Fakhidika. The Prophet said, Conceal your Fakhid. He said to him, Ya Jarhadu, Ghaddi Fakhidika. فَإِنَّ الْفَخِذَ عَوْرَةٌ The Prophet said, Abu Dawood narrated in Tirmidhi. What's the Fakhi in the English? Thighs. Yes. The Prophet also said, لَا تَكْشِفْ فَخِذَكَ Don't unveil your thighs. وَلَا تَنْظُرْ فَخِذَ حَيٍ Don't ever look at the thighs of a person who's alive. وَلَا مَيِّتْ And someone who's dead. Abu Dawood narrated it. It's so this one, I don't think, sorry. It's not an ijma' issue. Asana. Okay, yeah. And Imam al-Nawi, in Sharh Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions, ذَهَبَ أَكْثَرُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ إِلَى أَن And he mentions the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And he mentions that the awr of the man is between his what? Navel to his knees. Now, I, 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 somebody might say, look, bro, I'm sorry, but this is not um, this is not agreed upon. Issue. I don't believe the awr is this, for hey, example. Nah, no problem. Don't the football players take off their shirts? They shouldn't. The football uh, doesn't allow them to. Which one? There's a yellow card if you take off shirts. It's not allowed. Whilst the game's going on. Yeah, after the game is over, you can. So they do after the game. That's mm-hmm. when they give their t-shirts to the people. They do. Okay. They do. And uh, the auras are being seen. Okay. 
What about if a woman is looking at it? Yeah, it's not allowed. Uh, no, now, so the aura is showing. Now women are looking at these men. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did he not prohibit a woman looking at a man? Of course. The ulama are unanimously in agreement that it's haram for a woman to look at a man if, if she's looking at him with shahwa and desires. Al Imam Nawi in his Sharh Sahih Muslim he mentions, وَأَمَّا النَّظَرُ الْمَرْأَةِ إِلَى وَجْهِ الرَّجُلِ الْأَجْنَبِي فَإِنْ كَانَ بِشَهْوَةٍ فَحَرَامٌ بِالْتِفَاقٍ If a woman looks at a man, okay, a man who's ajnabi, it's not her brother or none of no, that, no. she looks at him بِشَهْوَ with desires, فَحَرَامٌ بِالْتِفَاقٍ It's haram by unanimous agreement. We don't have to even bring evidence for it. It's a unanimously agreed upon matter. What about if women are looking at these football players and they actually love how he yeah. looks? They are, they've got these pictures on on their, in the, on their social media outlets and yeah I think a lot of Muslims could understand that point that women shouldn't watch football what, what about a man looking at another man's aura and is that permissible a lot of no it's not allowed it's not allowed that's important this point is this point is important to me because I think it's another one that no one can escape men Even, are not allowed to look men, women are not allowed to look and another thing I'm telling you I'll be honest with you Shai which it leads to some women joking with their husbands and saying to them, if only you were like Ronaldinho, for example, or Ronaldo, or this or that, if you looked like him, oh, you know, as a joke. Mm. I mean, it doesn't even, that can't even yeah. be a joke, Aslan. Yeah. Are you a do youth? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these are, yeah, I, mean, I know some people might look at me and say, Ahi, take a chill pill. Relax, man, pump your brakes. Yeah. But these are things, will lie, as I said at the beginning, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, if we don't stop the minute things, these are not even minute these yeah. are big things. Mm. But even if it's to you small, we have to stop them because they're going to become big. They're going to become very big issues in our lives. Shahid, wallahi, it's sad that I deliberately didn't mention there's a powerful statement of Shaykh al Islam, um, the great Imam, the Mu'arikh, the Mufassir, the Muhaddith, half of the Hajar, uh, sorry, half of the Kathir, half of the Kathir, the Mufassir, the Mu'arikh, the Muhaddith. Ibn Kathir Rahimullah in his Kitab al-Bidai when he says something very powerful. He talks about the Zaman Dawlati Bani Buwayh al-Shi'iyya fi khilati muti'i lillah. He mentions وَاسْتَقَرَّ مُعِزِّ الدَّوْلَةِ بِمَدِينَةِ السَّلَامِ بَغْدَادِ ثُمَّ شَرَعَ فِي اسْتِعْمَالِ السُّعَاتِ لِيُبَلِّغُ أَخَاهُ رُكْنُ الدَّوْلَةِ أَخْبَارَهُ فَغَوَى الْعَامَةُ فِي ذَلِكُ وَعَلَّمُوا أَبْنَاءُهُمْ ذَلِكُ حَتَّى كَانَ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقْطَعُ نَيِّفًا وَثَلَاثِينَ فَرْسَخًا فِي يَوْمٍ وَعَجَبَهُ الْمُسَارِعُونَ وَالْمُلَاكِمُونَ وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَرْبَابِ هَذِي الصِّنَاعَاتِ الَّتِي لَا لَا يُنْتَفَعُ بِهَا إِلَّا كُلُّ قَلِيلِ الْعَقْلِ فَاسِدُ الْمُرُوءَةِ وَتَعَلَّمُ السِّبَاحَةَ وَنَحْوِهَا وَكَانَتْ تُضْرَبُ الطُّبُولُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَيُصَارَعُ بَيْنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالْكُسُو وَالْكُو وَالْكُوسَاتُ الطُّبُولُ تُدَقُّ حَوْلَ الصُّورِ الْمَكَانِ الَّذِي هُوَ فِيهِ وَهَذِهِ رُعُونَةٌ شَدِيدَةٌ وَسَخَافَةٌ سَخَافَةُ عَقْلٍ مِنْهُ وَمِمَّنْ وَافَقَهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ إِنْتَهَى كَلَامُهُ He's talking about sports that were, were started in, in a city called Medina to Salam. Yani these are sports that are swimming, okay. wrestling. Things that you generally you think, okay, these are some good things. Yeah, they help. Allowed. Ibn Kathir, what does he refer to them as? He refers to all of this and busy the Muslims with all of this. He says it only comes from Qalilul Aqli, those who have Aql was very little. Fasid al Muru'a. Yani who's. Morality and dignity was very low. Why? And Shahid, I want I, I really want to and he says something similar like that in his kitab, will be down here in another place. And he here even mentions that the, there was two teams that were present in, 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 in Baghdad. Okay? The one team was called Fadlun and another one was called Marushun. Ahlul Sunnah used to, the Sunnis used to support one and the Shia used to support one. And this is where they would argue on one another. Shahid. This was when the time the Muslims were, they were at the top. We had the Khilaf, the Muslims were in glory days. Just the other, Ramadan just finished mm. the other day. What happened? In Ramadan, what was happening? The Zionists were going to be mm. the you can yeah. and it's a Muslims, Muslims who were praying. People, some people were protesting and screaming and saying, oh, we need to self-help our Muslim brothers. A few days later, they're in front of a screen playing, watching football. The the Zionists and the non-Muslims have planned and plotted against us that much, Shahid, that we're watching football and we're preoccupied with this. Our lands and our countries, the, the resources and the benefits are being reaped and taken from it. Shouldn't we prepare ourselves as Muslims, knowledge-wise, education-wise, studying, learning, physically how to get ourselves ready in all forms of, the, of preparation, instead of wasting our time watching this to this level, to this level? 
شاهد والله this يعني you يعني the money that's been spent buying these televisions and all these things that people are doing اخي people are starving والله I'm not I'm saying the level that these things are the investment that have been put into it and if he another والله people need to look at it but coming back to the issue of looking Coming back to the issue of looking. So you're not saying you're not saying that obviously Muslims always have to busy themselves, always busy. Obviously, you understand that as a human being, you need time to wind down, you need time to relax. But you're saying it, the level it's taken. Of course. What do you mean by that? Because football is played once a week, for example, on average. No, it's, look, it, it, no, people are talking about it before, after they they're having laughs and jokes. It takes time from people, even when the game is not being played. Okay, this is a religion. It's a deen. It's a deen. It has adhkar. <laughs> Weird people, people going to charts, checking it, message friends. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's a consu- time consuming, mentally, even if it's happening very very I mean, once a week or two twice a week, it's happening. But it's it's taking people's time, and, and this is your umur. Now, mm. coming back to the issue we were talking about, which is looking. We have mm. met, aura of a man can't be looked at by a man and a woman, but imagine women who lo- looking at these things and getting affected by, yeah, I mean. After seeing all of this, starting to judge their husbands and say, "Look at you, how fat you are, and you're not in really shape." Look hmm. at these players who, yeah, Ali, judging their relationships are going out of the window. The men are watching these things, yeah, Ali, wrestling and things like that. Seeing women naked and things like that, judging their wives because of that. Yeah, Ali, all of these are present. Those are what? Those are all present. Well, yeah, I think that's one thing that again it goes back to when I said at the start. There are certain things that I don't think anyone can dispute in a football match, especially if you believe the aura, the thighs are aura for the man. Especially if you believe that, of course, it's ex- exposed. Even if the shorts are here, at one point he's going to do a tackle. He's going to cut, no doubt. And he, like you said, after the match, they swap shirts or whatever. Yeah, I think um, particularly during the match. I think really, if anyone was really thinking about that, watching a football match, you're watching someone's aura. Now, that's really something that has become small in the people's eyes. That, okay, yeah, I'm watching football. That's not my intention. I'm not really doing it for that. I'm just want to watch the game. But ultimately, you're doing something where you're disobeying Allah. For 90 odd minutes, you're disobeying Allah and you're pleased with it and you're happy with it and you're cheering and you're getting involved. Yeah, I think it's a big issue. I think it's a really big issue. Actually, to be honest, one of the scariest things that I saw, subhanAllah, was just before this podcast, I was looking at it and I saw it even when I prepared this topic many years back, is how, subhanAllah, A football player will take off his T-shirt he played a game with, sweating. He takes it off. Yeah. He throws it inside the, the, the crowd. and Or he will give it to a certain person. Shahid. The, the kid or the person goes, gets emotional. Hmm. Takes that T-shirt, kisses it. Or he will take off his shoes. Yeah. Shahid, his shoes. He will give it so much. Yeah. This is a really, really, really important point. Again, again, one of the strongest yeah, points yeah, for me Allah, is that now you have... It's a tabarruk. Now. And it's a non-Muslim as well. It's a tabarruk. Yeah. What do you mean by that? You have to explain this. Tabarruk is trying to look for barakah in someone. Yeah, he's not really. He just really idolized him to that no. level where he's so happy with this. No. It's Shahid. a prized possession. No, it's not. It's actually tabarruk. You're looking for barakah in this guy's shoes. No, you're, you, yeah. the guy won't wear it and play with it and think I'm going to score 100 no, no, goals it's now. No, it's not. He's just going to put it in his bedroom. Uh, of course. No, no one, no, no one, tabarruk doesn't necessarily mean that you wear that thing. It doesn't mean it. He doesn't think it's, it's good. F- f- finds it as a blessing. True or false? As a, what do you mean by blessing? Like blessing. something he's happy with? No, he finds this as a blessing. This is barakah. That I've got the shoes that Fulan played this game with and he shot yeah. with. Yo. Yeah. Okay, okay. Maybe. I think it really is. We're probably saying this the same thing. We're probably saying the same, same, same thing. Now, this is, again, not something that is for a small amount of people. I think if you had... A hundred thousand people in Wembley, for example, ninety-eight thousand of them would love to have Ronaldo's shirt at the end of the game. It's not a small issue. It's not. Shahid, Billahi Ali. Let's say you were a football fan right now, yeah. And I told you that your team that you support, the captain of that team, shouted your name out on television. How yeah, of you course, you feel very happy. That's what I'm saying. I'm with you on this. That's what I'm just saying. This is a very strong. On this, that's what I'm saying. On this flip side, Allah called you out in the Quran. Ya ayyuha ladina amanu. Allah called you out. Yeah. So if a non-Muslim Bring your ear close Listen to what Allah has to say You're not doing that So if a non-Muslim Mentioned my name on the TV For example And I'm happy with that Is that haram? What's yeah. the issue with that? Over Allah and his messenger No I'm not over Allah I've got But that's more the happy case with... That's the waqa Shahid No I'm saying I'm saying, I'm saying That some... is the waqa uh... People are Shahid People know يعني, The boxes that the football player يعني, Promotes And he does <laughs> his advertisements in. They know mm. that They know that the one he was wearing in that game. They know, and they don't even know Abu Bakr's real name. Mm. They don't know the Prophet's full name. 
They don't know basic things in their religion. Like Shahid, you know, look, well, like, there is an excessive love here that, 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 that's not there for the deep. That's where I agree with you. That's where I agree with you. I'm saying this could really reach a level that is very dangerous. I'm talking about a level of taking these people as idols, not necessarily bowing down and doing sujood to them, but I'm saying the way that people, and again, that's I'm, kind, I'm talking from, a, yeah, exactly. I'm, and I'm talking from experience. Again, I know people, I know people who are into football. I'm saying the way that they love Ronaldo or Messi, they have a picture of him, the, picture of him on the wall in their bedroom. If they were given his shirt, they'd be so, so happy. They'd go, home the treasure it this is is it's a very very serious issue and Shahid Wallahi I'll be honest with you there are non-Muslims who ha have done good NHS yani, doctors nurses who, who COVID the people in the lab who are making these COVID tests and trying out yani, it's, I'm not this issue is not just about non-Muslims as well it's the lowest of the low what is this guy what significance yeah. does he hold he's kicking up around a bull he's just Mastered this field What benefit do you bring me You don't bring me any benefits hmm. To be very frank and honest yeah, with you. Yeah. Why am I going to idolize you for What value do you hold for me Like in the doctor here Even if she's a, a non-Muslim She's a non-Muslim Or he's a non-Muslim He brings some benefit to you He's a doctor He's taking care of your health And everything I see more for, 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 for love for this than And even that's not right But you see more of a reason And you know what This is also I'll give you a story for example Again I've mentioned a little bit about history I don't know I think I mentioned this to you yesterday there was a, there's, this is not football. This is tennis. There's a tennis tournament, okay? It's the worst at football. <laughs> there's a Wimbledon, okay? It's a very famous tennis. As a kid, I used to go to Wimbledon every single year. This was, I don't know, I don't know how many. The district line goes and finishes there, right? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I just, line, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think, I can't remember. I can't remember. But yeah, I used to go there. There was a tennis player now who was not even a good tennis player. <laughs> he was like the number two in Britain. There's a guy called Greg Rosetsky. That will show how old he is. He doesn't play anymore. This guy, for example, he wasn't, there was a guy called Tim Henman, which everyone used to love. He's the main guy in England or Britain, UK. And there was a guy called Greg Rosetsky who was actually half Canadian or something. He even spoke with a Canadian accent, but Britain took him because he was good at tennis or something. <laughs> at the end of the match, he threw his shirt into the crowd. In the crowd. Okay, on BBC TV, you grabbed it. I'm the one as a kid, 14, 15, I don't know. I grab it. I remember watching the video on BBC after I went home. I watched it. I was like, yeah. As soon as I get it, I went to my friend. Look what I got. Look what I got. I got great yeah, position. To this day, I think to this day, it might have been taken down in my house in the UK, not my house, but my parents' house where I was growing up at that time. <laughs> I don't even want to say this. I've been, I moved out of the house, so I don't, I don't know. But to this day in the UK, I think, I believe, on my bedroom wall, my old bedroom wall, that shirt is pinned to the wall. And unwashed. His sweat is still there. I'm not going to wash it, of course, because it's Greg Rosetsky. <laughs> this shows, as a, just a simple example, again, I wasn't really... Is he, he's not Muslim, right? Of course, no, he's not Muslim. He's not Muslim. So he's not Muslim. Yeah, and he... Of course, there wasn't COVID at that time. Yeah. But do you, do you understand like yeah. the health problems that are there? He's he swear. Yeah, he Not even that. The, the religious problems. I've taken this guy's shirt and I'm thinking, oh, amazing. Even if you, let's put all religious, how savage you, yeah. like, uh, it must be to, to take a, a man clothed he's sweating. Yeah, I know. It's weird as well. <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nasty. I fuck a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, you, see the, you see where this... If you've admit, if you've seen it Definitely. Uh, and look back at it now, and you felt it, imagine the thousands of Muslims who are still like that, who believe in that, who are actually driven with love and passion, blind love for a non-Muslim. You can't even be like that to a Muslim, mm. let alone a yeah. non-Muslim. You know, a lot of some people might be watching this, honestly speaking, they might say, you know, I'm not at that level, but I'm going to say something that really affects everyone who watches football, I believe. When you're watching football at home, now you're not in a stadium, you're not going for a shirt, you're not just watching it on TV. There's a thought that comes in your mind. And I asked some people this as well yesterday. I asked someone, I said, does this thought ever come into your mind? Because even this brother that I asked is a practicing Muslim. Is, if it happens to us not, then you can assume that's happened to a lot of people. The thought that comes into your mind when you're watching this is that that non-Muslim on screen, he's living a good life. He's getting so much money. He's famous. He's doing something that he loves to do. He just plays football all day. How amazing is that? And he's getting now you start looking at not who is destined for the hellfire. He's a Catholic, he's the lowest of the low. Like I said, he's not even a high non-Muslim, he's a low, even non-Muslim. And you're looking at him and you're thinking, his life is 
really good man i'm telling you this thought is that i'm telling you i'm telling you very seriously this thought i believe enters it into everyone's mind everyone i'm speaking you know generally but i can't really think of many people i'm telling you i had this thought even after i was practicing islam i'm a practicing muslim i know the dean i know i as in i know the day of judgment is real i know all these things are real but i'm watching the football and i'm thinking oh this guy if i was that i'd be a muslim but i would love that life man get to play football get money that's a very dangerous thought to have about a non-muslim very dangerous thought. I'm telling you, this is reality. I asked someone a question yesterday and I even thought about the answer myself as well. And I thought, if someone asked you a question, who would you rather spend a day with, or let's just say one hour, two hours with, Cristiano Ronaldo or a normal Muslim guy who's just a nine to five Abdullah, normal Muslim guy? If I asked you that question, who would you say? Honestly, you have to be honest or I'd be honest. Allah, I'll spend time with him. So I sincerely wouldn't just, like he doesn't, he has no value to me at all. Like Ronaldo. There's no like, money. If you walked here, I would look at him. I would like. I'm saying, I'm saying, I guarantee everyone who watches football, myself included, I'll pick Ronaldo. I have to be honest. I'm being honest. It's a sad reality. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's good, but it's a sad reality. I'll pick Ronaldo. Why would I pick Ronaldo over this normal Muslim? Because to me, Ronaldo has a certain value. Why has he got value? Because the hype around him, he's famous. He's the best footballer. Whatever, he's a celebrity, all of this. Again, he's kicking a ball around the pitch. That's all he's done. He's a non-Muslim. Regardless of what he's doing as a profession, as a non-Muslim and Muslim, I should never value this guy in high in anything, not even one thing. But the fact is I've attached a value to him. I'm like, yeah, I spent two hours with Ronaldo, get to ask him questions, you know, what's it like? And this non-Muslim, who, so this Muslim who's better than Ronaldo in every way, shape or form, I'm saying I'll push him to the side. I asked another practicing brother this question, again, similar answer. I'm saying all of these people that you asked, I guarantee if they watch football, they're going to choose Ronaldo if they're honest with themselves. Why have we attached value to a non-Muslim because of this, and again, it's not just football, it's a lot of sports that come into this. Is a Muslim, a person who believes in Allah, and a person who doesn't believe, are they the same? They're not even the same, and you're saying he's better? Yeah. yeah obviously, the person will say, I don't say he's better as a person, Forget but I want to spend time with him. I want to spend time Forget with him. Even it's spend, a problem. Spend time with your mother and Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm. Yeah, no, I, w I would say personally my mother, but I'm sure some people out there would say... Out there would literally say, the woman who gave birth to you. Yeah, it's true. Nine months was pregnant for, with you. She's uh, taking care of you. Look at how far you are off the ground. She's done all of that for you. And today you will choose a non-Muslim who doesn't know who you are, hasn't done anything for you. You will choose to spend time with him. I'm telling you, Stad, yeah, that question you just asked me about my mother. I haven't seen my mother in a long time. She's in the UK. She came to the UAE recently, uh, not recently, but last year. But because of COVID, I went to go have a seat. I'm saying this answer now, my mother. I'm saying you asked me 10 years ago when I was into football, I'd have said Ronaldo. <laughs> Definitely. I'm saying uh, there's a question I ask people at home. If you believe that you're not really into football, you believe that other points we raise don't affect you, I'm saying ask yourself sincerely, who would you rather spend time with? A normal Muslim, nine to five, who's just a normal person, or Ronaldo or Messi or Federer or whoever your, uh, your sports hero is. I believe if you really are sincere and you're asking your question at, at home, I think you'll have your answer. Now, listen intensify the question okay. and I know alhamdulillah everybody would answer this in a good way spending time with the Prophet alayhi salatu well, of course and I believe inshallah yeah, like yeah I also believe that Muslims, yeah. that they will all say the Prophet alayhi Definitely, inshallah. no one would actually choose a football player over him and I believe they mean that when they say that same but why don't you learn about him then if, but what, if that's what you really mean mm -hmm. and you do mean it we know you mean it but why don't you learn about him then? if he means that to you you put him on the number one but what if someone says a wa sa'a? I do learn about him in No, yeah. some a majority of them don't know this. <laughs> yeah, it's That's true. the sad reality. I have a I have a class I was, before I started my Sira class. Brothers who are in the masjid, not the ones who are on the streets, the one in the, the ones in the masjid. I stopped, I said, brothers, tell me the Prophet's name. Muhammad, hey. My jaw dropped, Akhi. My jaw dropped. Mm -hmm. I asked basic questions about the Prophet, they didn't know. Yeah. So I'm saying, brothers, you, yes, you do. Nabi Allah Muhammad means everything to you, and you do. Yes, he, you, you do love him more than any football player I know. Alhamdulillah, our Muslim brothers and sisters around the world are not that bad. But then they should learn about him. Ali, give time to him. You're learning about this football player. How much he was bought from? How much he was sold? How much he, you know, his worth, his net profit? How much followers he has on his social media? You know all of that. 
have you learned the basic stuff about the Prophet who has done more for you mm. than any individual has ever done for you? Yeah. Because of him, because of Allah Taala, and after that, him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you you know it, what's right from what is wrong. You know it. He's to, to set the path for you to Jannah mm. and told you to stay away from that path towards hellfire. Okay. He deserves for you to spend that time and to learn about him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What else did you want to talk about? Any other points you want to mention? The harm that it also has is that it diverts you from the remembrance of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and the salah wa salam ala Rasulillah. The Prophet told us alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ma min qawmin, there are not a people, yaqumuna min majlisin, who stand up from a gathering they were in. La yadkuruna Allah Ta'ala fi where they don't remember Allah, illa qamu an mitli jifati himalin. It's like they stand up from the corpse of a uh, donkey. Wa kana lahum hasrah. And that the day of judgment, they're going to regret that gathering. They're going to be like, was I doing? I sat there for one hour and I never remembered Allah. Yawm al-qiyamah, you're going to regret it. Hmm. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the hadith, مَا جَلَسَ قَوْمُ الْمَجْلِسَ لَمْ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى فِيهِ وَلَمْ يُصَلُّوا عَلَى نَبِيِّهِمْ فِيهِ إِلَّا كَانَ عَلَيْهِمْ تِرَى There is not a people who sit in a gathering that don't remember Allah, that don't send salutation on the Prophet ﷺ, إِلَّا كَانَ عَلَيْهِمْ تِرَى It's going to be a state of regret for them. It's going, it's going to be what? Yeah. It's going to be a state of regret for them. They're going to regret not being able to to, to and that happens all the time you're so engrossed in the football game the opposite yeah. is being said how language are being used yeah okay what about tarkil jumu'ati wal jama'at friday khutbatul jumu'ah is on and a game is on <laughs> yeah there'll be some people that would watch the game you're not right. some people Shahid. <laughs> your frequency of of the tense is very weak some <laughs> the majority of the people mm. they miss the khutbatul jumu'ah i'm talking about those who are fans and players who watch it okay we know the message the day it's full is when there isn't a game. When there is a game, we know that we can tell. People were in the masjid know. I was the khatib of the masjid. Mm. I know the... Kh- You've seen the numbers drop when of there's... Of course. A fr- wow. Of course we've seen it. We've seen the jumu'ah and the jama'at. Okay, it gets worse now. People actually in at home, they won't even pray salah. And now even worse. Some of them leave the salah in its totality. They don't even pray. Because remember, praying the salah later is... is you don't have to pray that salah. Yeah. Inna salah takarit ala al-mu'minina eh? Kitab al-mawquta. The salah is at an appointed time. If that time goes, it's like a shop. If it's closed, it's shop, you can't go in. The time of the salah is gone. You deliberately miss that salah. The Prophet said in the hadith, Al-Ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salah Faman tarakaha faqad kafar And Imam Tirmidhi narrated in his jamia. The person who leaves the salah is a what? It's a disbeliever. It's a disbeliever. That's the strongest opinion. That he's no longer a Muslim and you're deliberately missing it. You know, again, Anecdotal, my, my own experience again. Even when I used to watch football, and this is maybe my early days of practicing Islam. I just used to watch football still back then. Even when I used to pray, I, I did pray, alhamdulillah. I used to go quick. I'm, I'm, I'd go half time or whatever, wait for the half time. <laughs> I'd go, the TV, okay, half time now. Okay, I've got 15 minutes, I think. Go upstairs quick, very quick. And the whole time, you're not thinking about you think that goal, oh, goal, man. I'm telling you this happens. I'm telling you happens to people who are practicing, who are praying, let alone the people who aren't even praying, who will watch the whole match and say, every other day of the week I'll pray, but this one, oh, it's the final, man. It's the final. How can I miss the final? Let alone the people. So there's people, there's different levels of this. There's people who don't even go to the, the, the jama'ah and the masjid. There's people who will pray at home, but they'll do it quick. There's people who won't pray at all on that day or during the match. I'm saying, again, we have to reiterate. Someone might be watching this and say, you know, if it comes in the salah, I'm always choosing the salah. I don't choose that over football. Again, there are certain points we might mention which don't hit home with you. But it doesn't dispute the fact that there are other points that you cannot escape that we've mentioned so far in the podcast. So again, Shahid, another thing I realized is destroying wealth. A lot of people, they waste so much money on football, whether it be PS4 games that they buy from it, the clothing that they buy because of the fact that it was promoted by their football, the team t-shirts that they buy. Yani the wealth in general that's been spent even by governments and yani organizations, the wealth that they spread, they spend on these things, which is something, what value does it hold? It has no value in Islam, in your religion, in your akhirah. It's actually preoccupying the Muslims with the, that which is less important than that which is important. You see, football should just be something people play. It's been overly concentrated on. So there's a few times that this has come out now. What if someone sits here and watches and say, are you saying that football is something that I do to enjoy? So first of all, let me bring the evidence okay. to provide that you shouldn't be going overboard in, in usage of your wealth. Allah Ta'ala said, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Eat and drink, but don't go overboard in eating and drinking. 
you're even you're not allowed to over, overly eat you're not allowed to overly يعني, uh, drink also Allah تبارك وتعالى said ولا تبدر تبديرا إن المبدرين كانوا إخوان الشياطين وكان الشيطان لربه كفورا يعني don't go overboard يعني التبذير it means it means leaving the dis- leaving the obedience of Allah تبارك وتعالى and going towards the disobedience of Allah by overly spending then Allah تبارك وتعالى he said وكان الشيطان لربه كفورا يعني جحودا جحودا عند ابن كثير رحمه الله بجن the Prophet also said كلوا وشربوا وتصدقوا والبسوا ما لم يخالطه إسراف أو مخيلة The hadith Ahmed and Ibn Umar generated The Prophet said eat, drink, give in charity, wear clothing As long as two things doesn't happen Overboard and don't be arrogant So even the drinking that's allowed You can't go overboard with it Not just allowed but you need it You need it mm. You're drinking So if we even say watching football is allowed Yeah, the people are overdoing it They watch the highlights They, what do you call it? They watch previous games. They watch YouTubers commenting on that It's game. Yani, they watch the actual game itself. They go out and they watch the game again so they can learn their skills. Yani, what time and wealth and overly done. Yani, every single penny we spend that is not in that which is getting us closer to Allah wa ta'ala, or that which is not allowed. You will have to respond to it Yawm Al-Qiyamah That pound and that penny I know people Who've got dishes In their houses Down in the sky And this and that Only mm. just because They want to watch sports from it So are you saying then, What if someone says they, they, they return back to you And say look Yes I do spend money On these things But that's because I need some relaxation time. I need to enjoy You're saying the Muslims Can't have fun What did I say The word Islam needs to go overboard People are going overboard In these things So the one who just does it Like for example Just watch it one a week, once a week You're okay with him No there are other, oh, there are other reasons okay. There are other reasons in, in place So I said It, does, it might not apply to everybody These points Another harm that it comes from Is قتل الأوقات وضيعها Forsaking or destroying time People are destroying their time Allah تبارك وتعالى told us والعصر Allah swore by time إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر شاهد look at this Allah swore by what? العصر العصر it means الدهر يعني الزمن A time Allah swore by the time سبحانه وتعالى And then he said إن الإنسان لفي Mankind is in a state of loss And then there's four people are taken out Knowledge Knowledge Righteous deeds Which is a da'wah to Allah Which is a sabr al-adhafi Those four If you're not in those four You're from Inna al-isana lafi khusr It's aamun illa ma akhassahu al-dalil Two blessings that The people have, they don't realize it until Allah takes it away from them. نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ Bukhari narrated this in Hadith Ibn Abbas. Two blessings the people have, they don't realize its value. Health and free time. When the person dies يوم القيامة, what is it that he's going to be asked about? لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربعين. Four things are going to be asked. عن عمري فيما أفنه, your time, how did you spend it? وعن شبابي فيما أبله, your youth. How did you spend that time? All day I was standing in front of a screen. I was watching the World Cup. I was watching this. I was watching that. I was watching highlights. I was watching this again. Your wealth, where did you get it from? Where did you spend it? You're going to be asked all those questions. And Imam Tirmidhi narrated that in Hadith Abi Barzat al Aslami. Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah authenticated in Sahih Tirmidhi. So all of these things, Akhi Shahid, it's things that we have to answer for Yom al Qiyamah. Do we have the time for it? Also, another thing, Shahid, is the clapping that are done. Okay. The clapping that are done when people, yeah, yeah, yeah. the goals are scored, or even the you know whistling that people do. All of these things. What does the Sharia say regarding these things? Allah says, "Wa kana salatum عند البيت إلا مكاء وتصديا فذوق العذاب بما كنتم تكفرون." Abdullah bin Abbas and he said, "كانت قريش تطوف بالبيت عراتا." Quraysh used to go around the Kaaba naked. يصفقون ويصفرون. They whistle and they make noises like that, clapping and all of that. That's they thought it was an act of worship for them. Mujahid mentioned something similar to that. Sudi mentioned that in the Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. So it was something that the Quraysh, ولذلك, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prohibited for what? For a person to يعني, do such a thing. يعني, cl- the women are only allowed to make noise, clapping when they're in the salah, if the imam does a mistake. What about the dancing that happened in the game when the, when the football player scores the whole game? He does a, uh, he dances, right? Yeah, celebration. What is that? Is it permissible? Mahalu tifaq by unanimous agreement of the scholars of Ahlul Ilm. Alhamdulillah, is that they unanimously agree upon 
that dancing for men is haram by unanimous agreement. Women, there's, it's, يعني, there's an exception. Women can, like in, in, in يعني, for their husbands and this and that. No problem. Like a man cannot dance by unanimous agreement. Don't you think you're thinking too deeply of about this? The guy just scored a goal. Of course, I'm going to look at everything in our religion. This I told you, our religion is saliha to dikuli zamani wa makan. And at the beginning, I told you, I have to focus on every little point about a matter. And the Wafa ibn Aqil mentioned, yeah. he said, قَدْ نَصَّ الْقُرْآنُ عَلَى النَّهِيِ عَنِ الرَّقْسِ The Qur'an prohibited from dancing. What's the evidence for that? وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا The word marahan here, some of the scholars explained it to be what? Batar and arrogant. When they school, how, when they school, how do they act? Arrogant, right? Mm. They, they're arrogant. The way they walk, and they, the way they puff their chests, and the way they, the movements that they make, and mm. their gestures. People mm. pick that up and they do it. They dance. All of these things, as a Muslim, when you see this, and this is munkar, do you start thinking Allah has been disobeyed here, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Shaykh al Islam to me, he said, وَأَمَّا الرَّخْصُ فَلَمْ يَأْمُرِ اللَّهَ وَلَا رَسُولُهُ وَلَا أَحَدُ مِنَ الْأَئِمَةِ بَلْ قَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ فِي كِتَابِهِ وَاقْصِدْ فِي مَشْيِكَ وَقَالْ وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا عباد الرحمن they walk on the earth, هَوْنًا All of these things, Shahid. Actually, I actually really want the people to really look at all of this. And say, wow, I didn't know the Quran spoke about all of these things. Mm, it's true. I well, didn't know the hadith of the Prophet spoke about all of these things. The Prophet said in the hadith when it comes to whistling and this and clapping, the Prophet said, At-tasbih lil rijal, wa tasfiq lil nisa. The only ones that can are allowed to clap in the prayer are the women. Sah? The men have to just say, Subhanallah. Mm. The women have to say, the women, they're not allowed to speak in the prayer, right? They're not allowed to. They just make. So men are not allowed to, to, to clap. That's something for the women. Men are imitating the women in this matter. You know, speaking about the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I'm sorry to go back to something we were discussing earlier. But you mentioned a hadith to me yesterday, which I, uh, I'd like to bring forward. Inshallah, we're talking about the way not uh, we look up to, or some of the Muslims look up to non-Muslim footballers and things like that. Are you allowed to praise a non-Muslim? He's so good at football. There's He's a the hadith that scholars talk about its authenticity, like in discussion back and forth regarding it. the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "La taqulu Don't say a, a munafiq or a disbeliever is a master or good or don't praise him. Wow. If he is, then you've angered your Lord. You're not allowed to praise him and, and speak highly of him. So if the hadith is authentic, some do you... Some of the scholars uh, look at it, some okay. of There's, There's a look of back and forth to it. But the point is, the point is, I don't want to, fall, I don't want to press my argument sure. on that. I'm saying, I, I, even if there was a shara'i prohibition on this issue, I can't. Someone who said Allah hasn't got a child. Allah has a child, sorry. Mm. Someone who doesn't believe in Allah's existence. Someone who doesn't even worship Allah, ta'ala, who disobeys Allah after he created him and brought into, to, into this world. I honestly can't speak greatly and highly and glorify him like that. I can't. Just my heart won't allow me. If someone says insult with your mother, your own mother, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even... even dismisses you, your mother's value and his importance. Yeah. Or you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't like him in any way, shape or form. You'd have enmity towards him. What about Allah? And now you're saying, this guy's such a good player. I want to watch him. I like the way he plays. Also the concept of backbiting. Yeah, you ladies, I'm going to study a lot of the sin. In the sin, there is no sin, and there is no sin, and there is no sin. Do you love one of you to eat the flesh of his son, and you will be forgiven. 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 Then they said, the Prophet then said, If what you are saying about your brother is actually in him there, you backbited him. But if you're saying about him what he hasn't even got, then you've just forged a lie against him. The Prophet in Hajjatul Wada, his farewell pilgrimage, what did he say? In the dima'akum wa amwalakum wa aradakum alaykum haramun ka hurmati yomikum hada, fi shahrikum hada, fi baladikum hada, ala hal balagh. Hadith Bukhari Muslim. Yani the Prophet said, your blood, your wealth, your honor is haram from one another. Like it is haram today, this day, in this particular month, in this particular land. Then the Prophet said, Allah help Allah, have I not conveyed? The Prophet also said in another hadith, Kullu al-Muslim ala al-Muslim haram, damu huwa malu wa irdu, hadith sahih Muslim. The Prophet also said in hadith Abi Dawud, inna min arba al-riba al-istidhalatu fi irdu al-Muslim bi ghayri haq. One of the greatest forms of riba is what? Right. It is to speak about the honor of your brother. Do people not backbite one another? That's what I was going to say. How does this come into football? Do they not backbite particular football players that yeah, are Muslims yeah. and say, oh, he's rubbish. He can't do this. Look at him. Yeah, backbiting I've seen. Backbiting even your, your, even, okay, backbiting even your, uh, 
your 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 other brother who's on the, who like he supports Chelsea. Yeah, You're yeah. talking bad about him. I think it's a number of different levels. Either fans to fans, fans to players. I think one of the things is a lot of people they take this issue very very lightly. I've seen my friends uh, do this very very lightly. They'll say something about, for example, Mo Salah or something like a Muslim footballer. They'll say, oh, like you said, he can't do nothing. He's rubbish. That issue, he's still, on the tear judgment, the fact he's a footballer, he's a celebrity, he doesn't mean anything. He's Muslim, Muslim, you're backbitting him. Some people think because he's a celebrity, it doesn't count here or something like that. There's, there's, there's no excuse for there's that. There's no right? excuse at all. What about the mockery and the, uh, the, that happens that people do to each other? Mocking you, but your, the fans, but mocking each other after yeah. the game. Even in the game, when the goal's scored and you want to get under your brother's skin, yeah. you, just, you, you jump in front of him and you start mocking him. Which is to look down at somebody and to belittle them and to ridicule them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned there are people that are humble and righteous. The Prophet said, لو أقسم على الله لا أبر منهم براء من المالك النبي رفيع سر حديث أحمد والترمذي يعني you're mocking someone who in the eyes of Allah تبارك وتعالى might be somebody very high and you're looking down at them brothers mocking is their siblings يعني yeah. one another yeah. so you know also in the football stadium that you know you mentioned earlier the chants you know a lot of them have swear words in it as well did people, you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, the chants that they do, the football chants, they, a lot of them swear words. So you're listening to that. You're Sometimes you're even saying this. Yeah. What about dhan al-su? Bad su al Yeah, think it bad. Ya ilayhi amaj talibu kathira min al-dhan inna ba'da dhan ithma. Where does that come in the football? Yani, so your, one, one team is playing, so the other team, you think bad of your, your the other team. Ah, they're mm-hmm. rubbish, they're not going to do. And then some Muslims are might be, or you might have su al of a Muslim uh, player. Or even in the game that people play within themselves. Mm. For the pitch Yeah and it's sort of one That you start thinking About your Muslim brother The idea is not And people take these things Very 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 Yeah and Personal إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظَّنُ فَإِنَّ الظَّنَ أَكْذَبُ الْحَدِيثِ Bukhari Muslim both narrated it Also the concept of الْهَمْزُ وَالْلَمْزُ بِالْمُسْلِمِينَ Name calling and, rid- and we mentioned that الخيلاء arrogance ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحة إنك لن تخرق الأرض ولن تبلغ الجبال طولة كل ذلك كارسي عند ربك مكروها When they score the way they are. لا يدخل الجنة في من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. Muslim narrated that. ألا أخبركم بأهل النار. The Prophet said, "Shall I not tell you about the people of Nar? كل كل عتل يعني جواد مستكبر." Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. لا ينظر الله. Allah does not look at. يوم القيامة إلى من جر ثوب ثوبه خيلاء. That Allah does not look at the person who drags his garment out of arrogance. بينما رجل يمشي في حلة تعجبه نفسه. A man was walking one day and was wearing his garment and he was fascinated and was full of himself. Ha. Then what happened? He, the earth swallowed him and he went into the earth. فَهُوَ يُجَلْجِلُ فِي الْأَرْضِ يعني يغوص He's going deeper into the earth because of all of that. يعني arrogance is a quality that people pick up from this. When they score and the people who are watching, they become arrogant from all of this, man. We, we only have half an hour left before Salah and I know after Salah you have to go, you're teaching a class. So I want to kind of, because I have some questions of my own that I want to cover at the end. But I want to, congr- is there any, I know you've said you had 41. I don't think we've covered half of that. but. Inshallah. Are we okay to conclude? Is there any really, really important points that you want to talk about just quickly before we conclude? I want to know the ruling. I have some questions of my own. I want to go into the ruling in a little bit more detail. Like what about the... One we mentioned, which is the concept of, you know, uh, we mentioned it, tarwi'a wa taqwif al-Muslim. You know, scaring a Muslim. Mm. We mentioned it, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُ فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلُوا بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا And it's scaring a Muslim. And they play the football game sometimes. Yeah, this, okay, so th- you mentioned this yesterday to me, yeah, and I found it funny. I, I didn't really, g- I, my head, I couldn't understand it. What you mentioned, I think you, you got up and you, uh, you said that when a player pretends to shoot, so he puts his leg back, but he doesn't shoot just because, you know, this this thing. And the, and the, the defender's like this, right? And you're saying, Shahid, what about that? The defender's a Muslim, for example, now. He's just, you're not allowed to do that. I, and I, yes, I just like, come on, man. Like, really, you're going into really extremes. Like, this is just a game. It's just a fun. It's just, you know, it's football. How else are you going to get around the player? Like, you need to do these kind of things. It's just, it's accepted before the game. This, all of these things. And then when I went home, to be honest with you, I thought about it. And this morning, I thought about it. And I think I'll tie this in with another issue, which is about tackling. You might 
in football obviously it's a very common barging is part of the game barging in fact yeah barge is a better example it's tackling people might say it's not allowed for barging you're allowed to shoulder barge these kind of issues now I thought about okay it's part of the game it's football so what like it's they're all men it's not a big deal I thought about something this morning I said if you agree like someone else would agree that you're not allowed to do this outside of football you can't barge and a must Maybe may be a non-Muslim, you can't barge to someone like this just randomly. You can't take their leg, you can't kick their ankle, you can't uh, scare them. You can't do this, shut up, right? You if can't someone just randomly came up and did this to you, what would you do? I don't know, I'll probably react like this or something. No, you stand up and this a fight. <laughs> okay, but you can't, you can, well, my point is you can't do these kind of things, right? Yeah. Even barging, for example, is part of the game, like you said. You can't do this outside of football. Mm. So now we know shut up and this is not allowed. We know yeah. Islam says you're not allowed to do this. We know that for a fact. Yeah. Then we the, the Prophet said, It's not permissible for a Muslim to scare another Muslim. No. Uh, and then everyone in this, uh, especially the issue of barging, because I think people might say, I'm not getting scared if someone do that, does this. Something. But the issue of barging, especially, which everyone agrees is part of the game, you're jostling, you're doing this. If someone says you're not allowed to do this outside of Islam, and I think everyone at home would agree with this, there's no doubt about it. What's, who says, oh, just because you're playing a football game or just because football comes in, suddenly the Sharia changes? Suddenly you're allowed to do this? So it's a point. It's a really valid point. Ahmed narrated in Muslim, listen to this, and Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi. And this is the wording of Al Imam Tirmidhi. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Hadith Al Imam, Hadith Abdullah ibn, Abdullah ibn Sa'ib, he, he narrates from Yazid, Abdullah ibn Sa'ib ibn Yazid narrates from his father, who narrates from his granddad, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, لا يأخذن أحدكم, that one of you should not take mata'akhihi la'ibad, take the stuff of his brother. And he's like his phone or things like mm. that. And he's joking. Wala jad, then even if you're serious about the issue. Woman akha the asa akhi fali rida. Bring it back to him. He's scaring him for a few minutes. He's wow. thinking, where's my phone? I can't find it. The Prophet said, don't do that. Subhanallah. Can't do that. Can't do that to a Muslim and scare him like that. We take these things lightly. Too, yeah, we do, we do. We do. It's true. But these things, ahkam shara'iya, are connected to it. The game is based on terrorizing someone's heart. Yeah, I, I, so I, just to go back with what I was saying, I know some people might say, honestly, when you said this yesterday about the taqwiful Muslim, like, you know, scared, I really th I thought you were going to be extreme. I thought, come on. So only when I really thought about it and it took like, you know, a few hours to think and I was thinking about this morning. And again, that's why I wanted to do this podcast because I, on the other side, like genuinely on the other side for once on the hot seat, I honestly feel like some of the stuff that is very, it's, it's a bit strange, you know, this these, these kind of things. But then when I thought about it, and I really did think about it. If I believe that you can't do that outside of football game, then the rules of Islam can't change because of football. Because football does not mean anything. It's just, it's just, it's, it's not, it's nothing. It doesn't mean anything on the day of judgment. You can't say in the of Allah, oh, it's a football match. Football doesn't have any meaning. So you just disobeyed Allah for no reason. I want to go back to a point that we mentioned, which is the issue of praising the non-Muslims. We remember that I mentioned the hadith, لا تقول المنافق سيد. Don't say that munafiq is a sayyid. فإنه إن يكون سيدا فقد أسخطتم ربكم عز وجل. Hadith of Imam Abu Dawood and Al-Bukhari narrated his adab al-mufrad that Shaykh Al-Albani authenticated this is a hadith sahih. There is a dispute on his authentication. Like in great scholars, like Fadl Allah Al-Jilani in the sharh of, يعني, uh, in the sharh on the kitab, uh, it's called Fadl Allah Al-Samad, في شرح adab al-mufrad. He explains it. يعني, Going even if you're praising the non-Muslim, going overboard in praising him because the word Sayyid is and it's mubalagha mm. in praising him. In Riyadh al-Salih al-Nawawi chapter is a chapter where he calls it Babu al-Nahi an mukhalatati, sorry, mukhatabati al-Fasiqi wal mubtadi' wa nahwi ma bi Sayyid wa nahwi. The chapter that is prohibited to address a Fasiq, a mubtadi' and anyone other than that to refer to him as a Sayyid. Not to call him by those, 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 those fancy names. Al Iz ibn Abdul Salam in his fatawa he says, It is must that we belittle the non Muslims. Well, fasakatu and the, the sinners. Zajjaran and kufrim. So we can warn the people against their kufr and their disbelief. Wa fisqim. Wa ghayratan lillahi azza wa jalla. And having ghira for Allah's religion. Also, Nawawi in his kitab al adkar he says, Babu jawazi takniyatul kafiri wal mubtadi' wal fasiqi. Ida kana la yu'rafu illa biha. We refer to the non-Muslim by a kunya, just so his name is not known. Yeah. And we give him a name, we make him ambiguous, unknown. We don't give him that hmm. well respect that people try to, to give. And now what do you hear? The best, the greatest of all time. This is the best. Oh, subhanallah. Yani, 
أن ولد كوني عي تودي أكني حين أناديه لأكرمه ولا ولا ألقبه والسوءة اللقب يعني sometimes the كوني can be out of praising uh, and sometimes it can also be not to يعني sometimes it can be like أبو لهب Yeah. Okay, I'm really going to have to wrap it. I know you got more. I know you got more, but we're not going to finish there. And I really want to finish there. I know you've got a class later on as well. So I'm sorry, but we're going to have to wrap it up. Now I wanted to say, we've mentioned a lot of on this podcast, mentioned a lot of different points. We said at the start, we weren't going to mention until the ruling until the end. What is the ruling on football then? So the hukum of football from all of this, after I mentioned all of these mahadir, all of these prohibited matters in it, I don't believe anyone who's looking for the truth. طالب الحق seeking the truth من المسلمين that he could come to any other ruling other than that that is haram watching football because of all of those things that are connected to it now I, like I said at the start I've not heard anyone in the English speaking world ever ever even suggest this that watching football can be possibly haram so who preceded you in this هيئة كبار العلماء يعني سوري اللجنة الدائمة when they were asked about football برئاسة الشيخ عبد العزيز بن باز رحمه الله رحمة واسعة. When the year was 1401, they were put. This question was put to them, and they are four men that were sitting in that board. There was Abdullah ibn Qu'ud, Abdullah ibn Wudayan, Abdul Razak Afifi, and Abdul Aziz ibn Baz. All four of them, which are a عضو of a legend of the Imam Al Bughuth Al Almiyah Wal Iftah, they gave the fatwa that football is not allowed. Four great scholars of Al Islam. Also, the scholars that made it haram is Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Muhammad al Qasim, Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz. I mentioned Sheikh Abdullah ibn Quud. I mentioned Sheikh Abdul Zakaf Afifi. I mentioned Sheikh Abdullah ibn Qudayan. I mentioned Sheikh Hamoud ibn Abdullah Tuijil, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Salman, and many other who pointed out the prohibition of it. Their evidences that they provided and they gave clearly and categorically shows. How could it be halal to watch these games when all of these mahadir shari'i are present in it? No. I think I saw Sheikh Ibn Thameen, I think, might have said something similar. I think, I'm not sure about that, but I think I might have that, seen that as well. So what's important so is it's not coming from you. It's not coming from your back pocket. It might be the first time someone's heard of this, especially in the English-speaking world, but it's been spoken about in the Arab world. It's been spoken about before. No one might have spoken about it in the English world. Maybe they have. I don't know. I'm not sure. But just because it's the first time someone's hearing it and the first time they're hearing it is from yourself, it doesn't mean it's come from you. There are people who are noble scholars, noble scholars who have preceded you in this. That's what we're saying. Uh, okay. Um, I, well, I want to go into a little bit more now about the ruling because a lot of people, what they say is that some of the things you mentioned are for the professional footballers. Mm -hmm. For example, the professional footballers, they can't play the Salah. Okay, I can. The professional footballers, they dance when they celebrate. Okay, I don't do that. The what, I want to, what I want to understand is that if you're watching a professional football game now, so you're watching things and you agree that these things are haram, they shouldn't be done. That If I'm watching this football match, are you allowed to watch something that's haram and like enjoy it? Are you allowed to do that? No, you're not allowed to. I said, مرة منكم منكرا فليغيره بيدي فإن لم يستطع فبقلبي فبلساني فإن لم يستطع فبقلبي وذلك أضعف لمن. So if you can't even stop Just explain this, in English. Sorry, you're trying to say Anyone who sees evil, you see munkar in front of you. What do you do? You change it with your hands if you, you can. can't. Okay, then you can't. You, you, you can't. You hate it in your heart. You hate it then. Yeah, and that's, and, that's, and that's the lowest. Amen. You're loving it. So for example now, someone's enjoying football, they see it as a, you're right, yeah, you're right. I, I, I see, I think this, the reason I want to ask that is because I really want people to understand that if you agree there are things in football is haram, which everyone can agree that the Carlsberg, for example, that Liverpool used to have in the, back in the 90s were on the shirt, there's, there's all of this stuff that's around it. Or, even more than that that we've mentioned so far, you agree this is present in the professional footballers now, you can't enjoy that. You can't watch that, you can't enjoy that. Okay, Allah, Rabbu Samawati wal Ard is being disobeyed and you're there saying, ah, I want to watch this, have, let's no, have a good game. Uh, when the, when, the, when the, the game finishes, they take an alcohol thing and they go, they yeah. throw it. They do that. What about when they when they listen to music? Which I really, didn't even go that, that it was from yeah. the 41, where they, the music is played before the game starts. They, the kids are standing True. in front of the, the, mm. the, the, the music is being played. يعني واستفزز من استطعت منه بصوتك واجلب عليه بخيلك ورجلك وشاركه في الأموال والولاد وعيدهم وما يعيدهم الشيطان إلا غرورا يعني all the discussions that we had regarding music and how haram is yeah. and it shows it really it really does show and it really does prove 
that the, we're starting to become numb and, and appreciating the ma'asi and the sins that are being done right in front of our eyes. And you also mentioned as well at the start that you just need one of these to prove it's haram. You mentioned many, or someone just has, just one of these has to stand for it to be haram. And you know what's happened, I think, a lot of times is that People sometimes they have to put up with certain muhalamat. For example, you're in the UK, you're going to the supermarket, you don't want to listen to music, you don't want to, but you've got no choice of just, you know, being played in the mall, whatever. Football is not like this. It's an important thing to mention. Football is an active choice you're making. It's not part of your work. It's not a benefit you're getting. It's just something you actively choose to watch and enjoy. If there's a halam connected to it, it's... And you know, the difference here is, pay attention here. When you go to a supermarket and there's music playing in the background, you're hearing it, but you're not listening to it. And we distinguish between the two. Yeah. Like in, when you're play, watching the game, a lot of the times people are listening to the commentators, what he's saying and the mm. game, to listen to it. There's music in it. Yeah. Shahid, what people don't tend to understand is this does not just stay as watching a football game. It moves into your personal life as well. Mm -hmm. Guess what happens? You buy a PS5 game because of that. And you start playing it now. You start wearing that t-shirt outside and inside. You start praying salah with it. You're inviting people into the... People see you with that t-shirt. They know you support that team. And I I don't... I really think some people just look at the concept of watching a game as like, oh, we just watch football. Why is it haram for? I think, yeah, I think some people, what they might... And this is the reason I want to make my point is... They might say, just like you're not listening, you're, you're, you're not hearing it, or you're not listening to the music. You're not intending to listen to music at a supermarket. For some they might say, I just want to watch football. All these other things that I connect to it, I'm not really there for that. But the point is, the point is, it's not like shopping for groceries. It's not like going to work. It's a thing that has got no benefit for you. It's just something you're actively choosing to do. In that situation, even if you're not here for the haram elements and you're here for the ball being kicked around or whatever, even if you have that, it's not allowed. Even, 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 if it's not allowed at all because you've made an active choice to watch something that's haram as an enjoyment, as a pastime. Okay, um, there are some shubhat that people question the questions that people bring up. So I've got some of these listed now, and I just want to quickly go over them. We haven't got too long, but I just want to quickly go over them. One of the, some people say that okay, you're telling the football is haram now. For example, the kids if they don't watch football, they're going to be out in the shisha cafes. They're going to be out on the streets. Isn't football better than engaging these haram activities? They're going to do after and before the game, anyways. Plus, you're talking about something might happen that it might stop them from this and it might not stop them from it. It's based on none, speculation. We know these haram things are present in watching football. So you want me to, 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 to fall into something we know it's haram based on something that might happen, that this might preoccupy them from doing haram. I mean, they even watch the football whilst having shisha. They watch it, they watch it in a shisha cafe. The, 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 the honest, the truth is, you can't justify it and say it's haram, sorry, sorry to say it's halal and it's permissible because um, of this يعني, speculation that you created and Allah mm. alam if it's the case, might be the case of for one or two, three people. But look at all the harms that are coming in it. Al-adawat wal the animosity and the hates that happen between people based on this. Al-sadu al dhikrillah it blocks you from the remembrance of Allah. Al-hukum bighayri ma anzalla that we mentioned. Al-tashabbuh bil kuffar and all of the other things that we mentioned. Al-mualad, al-hub wal budu li ghayri illahi. All of that which we mentioned. All of those are ma'loomun yaqeena. We know certainty those things are present. Hmm. Okay? okay? Like in this which you are mentioning here, Allahu a'lam, it's يعني, ظني, speculation. It could possibly stop them from it, and it probably not. Yeah. Uh, okay, another question people ask is, and again, we didn't talk about the ruling on playing football. I'm not talking about a professional level. Mm -hmm. but I'm talking about, you know, brothers going to the park and playing football. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that okay? Is that permissible? Yeah, that's different, Ahi, from the concept of watching football. There could be some benefits that, are in it, that we see, like Abdani Shabab. The youth might be strong and might find strength and everything from it. But even that, Shahid, if we look at it, with that being said, there sometimes can happen, even with that, there could be haram things that happen in there. Some people, they turn out to be other like, bad people when they play when they start playing games. Yeah. They can become very violent. Yeah. Generally speaking, a believer to become strong and mu'min al qawiyyu khayrun wa habu ila Allah min al mu'min al daif wa fi kullin khayr. Hadith Sahih Muslim. Yes, you're right. The strong Muslim is better than the weak Muslim. But the strength here, first of all, is their iman. Okay. Second, then, it's the physical side of it. But if this f activity that you're doing, and it's honey, it's going to bring you into things which are haram, it's not allowed. Plus, all this time, people, you know, a lot of people, they say, yeah, I need to be physical, good, and physical, and his heart is bad. 
I mean, physically looking good is not praiseworthy. Allah spoke about the munafiqeen. What did he say? When you see them, their physical amazes you. Whoa. Look how big his biggest triceps and the biceps and all are. And he's weak in terms of his. He's very weak in terms of his. He's very weak in terms of his. He's very He's very weak in terms of his. Allah doesn't look at the physical side per se. Hadith. حديث صحيح مسلم من حديث أبي هريرة إن الله لا ينظر إلى أجسامكم ولا إلى صوركم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم. Allah looks at people's hearts and their actions. So first of all, focus on that and then look at your your physical side. No problem when it comes to that. So you're saying, for example, playing football is not the same as, as so when you're playing football on a professional level, there are certain things you can't remove. But as a group of brothers, you can agree beforehand that there's no shoulder barging. Everybody has to cover the awrat uh-huh. at all times. So you can put certain, you have more control over the game. So what you're saying is not the, quite the same ruling if you're taking. Yeah, there might be problems that arise from it, but you're saying Aslan is it can be is mubah to play football in the park with just brothers as long as you're making sure of you're conscious of everything the Sharia. Yeah, yeah. and even if like, somebody says, look, actually, there's benefits in something, it doesn't mean it's permissible. The khamr has benefits. Mm-hmm. The benefit can be in something, but it doesn't mean because there's benefits in it that it's yeah. Look, learn archery. The Prophet said, "Ala inna al-quwwat al-ramiya, ala inna al-quwwat al-ramiya." This is Sahih Muslim. Honey, the strength is in where you're looking. You're looking for quwwah and strength. Archery, it's a beneficial thing. Go learn it. It's quwwah that the, sh- the Prophet referred to it as. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi said in the hadith that Imam al-Nasai narrated, and other than him, and the wording of this hadith is slightly different, but the meaning is, is the same. The Prophet said, "Kullu shayin yalhu bihi binu Adam." Everything that preoccupies the children of Adam is batil. It's not allowed. The Prophet said, إِلَّا ثَلَاثًا except three. رَمْيُهُ Archery. And قَوْسِي Archery from. وَتَأْدِيبُ فَرَسِهِ And also, يعني horse. يعني disciplining his horse and ride, horse riding and stuff. وَمُلَعَبَةُ أَهْلُهُ And also playing around with your family members, your wife and your children. فَإِنَّهُنَّ مِنَ الْحَقِّ That's from the, that's from the haqq. There are different wordings in the hadith. Well, either Alika, some of the scholars, I'm a large number of scholars, actually, you could actually say the Jumhurul Ulama, they didn't unrestrictedly say that all types of, of, of sports are the asal, it's that it's alibaha. They didn't. They actually said that with this, they, they said that the plague is allowed if three things are not present. They always restrict them with it. They say if it's not tarku wajibin. You're not leaving off a wajib when you're doing it. Or fi'lum hadhurin, or you're not doing haram in it. Or dararin, or harm is not in it. When those three, the scholars mention it. If those three are present, they said this, this type of sport okay. or this kind of type of يعني, activity is not allowed. Great scholars have mentioned it. Shai, look at this. Allah mentions in the Quran, it's Surah Tawbah. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِرْصَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ لمن حارب الله ورسوله من قبل ولا يحلفن إن أردنا إلا الحسن والله يشهد إنهم لكاذبون. الله mentions a group of people wanted to go. They built a masjid when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was away. A munafiqin they built it. The reason why they built it was what to divide the Muslims. To cause disunity and this is a masjid part of Islam. Is it praise? What do you think? Is it sunnah shariah? Of course it is. Yeah. Is it قربة الإلهية something get closer to Allah تبارك وتعالى? It is. But when the masjid became a means to disunite the Muslims, the Prophet was told, لا تقوم فيه أبدا. Don't go and pray inside that masjid. Don't stand inside that masjid. Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. So if we know this sport is causing disunity, it's causing riffraffs, it's causing depression to youngsters, it's causing all these mawani and mahadir, how can it be permissible? Mm. And just the fact that it has teams, it's just automatically disunited, right? Yeah, it's united. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, some people might flip that on you and it actually says it brings the ummah together. Like for example, you saw the, the, the nation of England recently, they're all united together because they all want to win the World Cup. If you have a Muslim team playing a non-Muslim team, the whole Muslim country of this team, Saudi Arabia playing, I don't know, France for example, whole of Saudi Arabia are going to be united on this. They're, they're only united on that certain game. The day, next day they're disunited. Who said also that the unity should be based on a particular nation? The unity of Muslims should be what? All over the world. Okay, let's just say all over the world. You've got a Muslim team versus Saudi Arabia, France, the whole Muslim ummah say we want Saudi Arabia to win. We want, not just Saudi Arabia, we want the Muslims to win. Isn't that a good thing? Can't, can't football bring people what together about, what is about, what I'm saying. What about the few Muslims that are going to be in that football team as well? 
in the other team, yeah. the, in the other country. Because he deserves a lot. No, even there, they're just, they're, they're all the Muslims together. You know what happened? Like, for example, what happened in the fighting, uh, you know, this UFC thing. You know, last year, I think it was, this is very famous. Connor uh, uh, McGregor and Khabib. You know Khabib, this fight. Okay, they had a fight. Now that was like Islam versus Kufr. It, was it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, I'm saying, and it wasn't, we're not, we're not saying that. But what I'm saying is the Muslims who were in Connor's country, I think he's from Ireland, the Muslims who were in there were still supporting Khabib. It brought Muslims well, together though. Some Muslims, none Muslims were supporting Khabib. Yeah, what I'm saying is, doesn't it, doesn't, can't sport bring people together as well as disunite? That's what my point, can't it bring people together? But it does, look, first of all, when it brings the people together, it doesn't bring them together on a religious grounds. It brings the people on a certain event and they disagree later. That's number one. Second thing I want you to is that when you say it brings the people together, what about the non-Muslims who came with the Muslim, non, with the Muslims on, on Khabib as well? Yeah. Who, who supported him? There's a large number of non-Muslims who supported him. And actually, Rus all Russians were supporting mm -hmm. him as a Russian national. Yeah. Okay. That's a problem. There's, and again, with all honesty, the game is not allowed Aslan in, in, yeah. in the, so whether a Muslim do a non-Muslim, it doesn't, it doesn't change the ruling. This game is not allowed to punch a person in the face and etc. Okay, what if, and again, your answer at the end probably covers this one as well. But what if someone says that actually football is actually helping us Muslims in the UK? Mo Salah is scoring goals for Liverpool. Suddenly there's not as much Islamophobia. People aren't abusing Muslims. They're actually learning about Islam. It's a form of da'wah. But then three, four, five days later, Mo Salah is going to go on, 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 on online. And then he's going to hug a woman. Mm. And then all the Muslims are going to feel like that's fine then. And they're going to justify his actions. And he, just when he does the good, what about the wrongs that he does that all the Muslims are justifying, are accepting, and he's normalizing these things for us. And again, we mentioned at the start that if the ends don't justify the means. Someone might say it's good da'wah, people are coming to Islam, but you've done something haram to get there, so it's a problem. Okay, um, this issue of the, it being mubah aslan, like, you know, just enjoying yourself, permissibility, relaxation, a lot of people might watch this and say, oh, you're saying that the Muslims can't even just relax and wind down, except if they're doing archery or the things you mentioned. Can't Muslims just relax? What do you do for relaxation? I read. <laughs> but I'm saying that I, read. <laughs> I enjoy myself yeah. doing that and spending time with my kids. But if somebody doesn't, okay, no problem. Yeah. I don't want to force everybody to be like me. If you don't feel comfort and joy, those, those things I, I, which I enjoy, I'm sure playing it with your siblings, your brothers, your friends is fine. Mm. What, why do you have to watch another guy making money? This, this guy is in, he's in his nine to five job, Shahid. Mm. He's working. It's, it's like me sitting in the office and watching a guy do his job. Yeah. Plus, watching, again, we've, he's typing on the computer, I'm watching him. He sends an email, I'm, like, I'm sitting right next to him. That's how I see it. people are watching football players. This guy's getting a job. Every minute that goes, his salary is playing. He's, he's, what he's doing, I find it very smart. No, because he's doing haram, but, but haram, like in a yeah. worldly perspective, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it from. Yeah. What are you doing, scheme brother who's at home, still living with his mother? You've got a chop. You haven't got you have you have got a job. Right after that, you're telling your sister, go get me food. Yeah, I want to eat. <laughs> and Shai, let's be honest, Wallahi. Play a role yeah. in your own house, play a role in raising your children. It's sad, Wallahi. It's really but for Muslim who says I just want to relax and I do that all six days a week, but just for one day, I just want to relax a bit, you're saying do something that's not haram, basically, yeah. is the answer. And what about the Prophet ﷺ, for example, he, so I've got a hadith here. You know the, the time where the Prophet ﷺ was seeing an Ethiopian woman playing with her children and Aisha radiallahu anha came to his shoulder and she stayed there for a while. Isn't this an, a time where the Prophet ﷺ is watching non-Muslims here? And it, well, how does that play with the issue? So first of all, it's an issue of enjoyment. Why is he looking at a woman? Who's, who's it? Prophet ﷺ, there's an Ethiopian woman, right? So he's looking at a woman, the and it's, but it's for purposes of enjoyment. No, I'm saying to you, first of all, let's not mix a few things together. You have to prove that the Prophet was looking. He was, we don't have that. Again, there are many other connotations that could be connected to it. We're not looking at a person. Football, I told you, there's a lot of things that are in football. The promotion of alcohol. The promotion of yani, signs that are, that are against Islam, like the Christian sign. Su'ul akhlaq, the football player spitting in the, in the pitch. People picking that up. Him doing the Christian sign when he scores, prostrating for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that were present there. This is Shahid, it's not me watching brothers play football hmm. on a football pitch. 
And that's not the case. Here Literally. what's taking place is so many haram things. So here, what you're saying is Qiyasu al fariq It's two different things. Even when Umar radiallahu anhu came and the Prophet said, I said Umar here, he said, indeed, I see the shayateen among men and jinn have run away from Umar. That's where Umar said. So, so this is clearly something that's not praiseworthy that's happening. But out of enjoyment, the Prophet is watching it and even invites. Sorry, he even invites. The Prophet uh, uh, corrected Umar in his thoughts. But the point I'm trying to come to, we dealt with this issue when it comes to, comes to music. What I'm basically trying to say is that what the Prophet did here is totally different to what we're talking about here. We're not, we're not, talking, we're not just talking about watching football. We're saying watching a promotion of alcohol. But the second thing is the glorifying of a player on a level la yutakhayyal. Yeah, and you can't even imagine, Shahid. And you remember when, 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 and, uh, when uh, Ren is it Ren Ronaldo, 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 when he moved the Coca Cola from the table and he pushed it to one side. Yeah, how many Muslims spent time retweeting that, talking about it, discussing it? And he, who is he? He's, who is he? What value does he? And Allah is mm. Who is he? He's nothing. Yeah. At that time that you're doing that, Palestine, what was happening there? Right that moment. Muslims are suffering in China. All of that. You are under now as a Muslim. You, Islamophobia is on the rise. All of that. A few weeks before that, you were in a protest screaming and shouting and crying for the people of Palestine. You were screaming on the pulpit for the issue of the, 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 the Chinese. Uh, yani, Uyghur Muslims. The Uyghur Muslims and concentration camps that they're keeping them in. And a few day, weeks later, you're, you're watching football and you're supporting. Uh, Anna, wallahi, I don't know. Okay, final point from my side, final shubha that people bring is, isn't it mentioned in some of the biographies of the great Muslims in the past, in the past that they played football? See, this is another distortion in the playing that people do. Yani taking the word kurrah and thinking that that's the same as football. Yani they mention... Uh, Al Imam uh, Ibn Kathir in Kitab al Bidai wa Nihaya, when he spoke about the biography of Nuruddin Muhammad ibn Zanki, rahimahullah, he did mention, he said, Wakana Nuruddin, Hassan al Shakri, Hassan al Laibi bil Kurrati. But the Kurra here, it's not what these people they're, they're, they're referring to. No, not at all. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's totally different from it. Uh, from it. It's actually what, what, what they call today pole game, right? Where polo. Polo. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Polo, yeah. So it's a polo game. Horse riding when hitting the... Yeah, where the person's sitting on the horse, he's got a stick, and then there's a few people playing. and it, like, They did that because it was like a form of preparation as an, as soldiers and armies. It was, it, was, it was used, and the Salaf used to like this. Okay. So that game that the Ibn Kathir mentions, and polo. Other, it's, a, it's a polo game. It's mm. basically different to this one. So it was a form of preparation for jihad and learning... Yani to basically be able to sit on your, your camel and also be able to swing the uh, stick. Uh, the ball was made out of hair or something like that. I was made, they used to hear it, hit it. Uh, and those benefits like that. So in, in terms of its language and what it is, is the, it's a different thing. Uh, and it's also in terms of its ruling, it's different. So it's two different things. Again, the, don't take football out of the context that we mentioned it. If you just say, oh, football is haram to you. No, no, I didn't say football is haram. I said watching football in all of these things that it has. If you bring me a scenario where all of that is not present, yeah. then of course it becomes halal. I'm just saying I, yeah. don't, I don't see a situation. You're like really that. talking about watching organized professional football. You're not talking about two brothers who just go in the park and just kick a ball a couple of times for three minutes, four minutes. You're not talking about that. So, okay, it's important that you mention that. That's good. One thing I think we didn't mention, which I actually think is a really important point. We might have mentioned it, I can't remember. I think you did actually. The, the football shirts that the, the people wear now, a lot of them have crosses. England, for example, the, the flag has a cross on it. Uh, Barcelona uh, shirt, I think, has a cross on it. Manchester United has red devil, has a devil, has a red devil on it. Um, what, what does the Sharia say about wearing crosses and these yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. things? Shahid, do you know what? It's really sad. It's that it, the cross is there, which is a religious symbol. On top of that, it's a country that colonized Muslim countries, gave Palestine to the uh, Zionists. Yani, you're representing them, you're supporting them. Shahid, wallahi, I, I, I don't think Muslims are unaware of all of this. Shahid. They know the ruling of this and they know the ruling of that. And yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah, that is obviously an important point, but more than that, these, these flags, you're wearing a cross, that's a religious symbol that you're wearing on, on your shirt. You're wearing a red devil 
shaytan how anyone can really think about this and think that it's okay uh, so I just wanted to mention the point about the, the football shirts and plus most of them have the names of non-Muslims on the back you know that right they have like Messi's name on the back whatever okay taking him to the masjid yeah okay fine my heart dropped when I saw these people in the Kaaba he, said, oh, he, he, can't, he physically can't come to the Kaaba but his name is in the Kaaba in the Kaaba Okay, I just want to summarize it very quickly. We have to go inshallah soon and then I'll give you a chance to just summarize it as well. I think, you know, even when we when prepare, not, not really preparing because we didn't really prepare for it, but when thinking about doing this topic, I really thought that a lot of people watching this at home will think that this is something extreme, something they've never heard of before, something that's very difficult to swallow. And I can understand where they're coming from. I myself, even when we spoke about it yesterday in a great length, like I said, I've come from a background where many people who are into sports, I'm in a similar background. I'm no different to them. But really when I understood it and I went back and forth with you numerous times and we spoke about many different issues, I think if the Muslim really thinks honestly and sincerely about this topic and thinks that yes, football in my whole life, I've seen nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. What's the, what's the issue? But now that you mention all these muharamat that are connected to it, which I can't remove, and I don't agree with all of your points that you mentioned, and I, there's more points you didn't mention, I might not agree with some of them as well. But the ones that I personally cannot strip away is the issue of awra. You're clearly watching someone's awra when you're watching football. The issue of al-wala wal bala is so big. I can't tell you how big that is, knowing from personal experience, people who support football teams. The issue of uh, uh, um, looking up to non-Muslims. Like I said before, when you watch a football game, you can't help but think, this guy's living a life. This guy's a footballer. You can't help but admire them. You can't help but praise them. Asharia talks about all these things, but many people might not have been aware of them. Um, the issue of... Uh, um, like you said, the harming that comes to the Muslims or, or even not, you know, other people, non-Muslims even, shoulder barging, kicking someone's ankle. If you say this is not permissible outside of football, then it's not possible for it to be, to be permissible with football. Football doesn't mean anything in the Sharia. It can't change rulings. Uh, the issue of free mixing, like in a stadium, for example, you see men and women all free mixing. They don't say this is only brother's side, this is sister's side. And when you're watching at home, someone might say, I'm not in the stadium. You're watching at home, the camera automatically goes to the crowd. It goes to the crowd. You're watching the football the cr and there's a woman there that you've just seen. These kind of things, I know we take it light. I know we take it light. I know in the past I've taken it light. But these kind of things that there's no doubt that they're haram. No one would disagree with them outside of football. So now you have football it doesn't justify them in any way. And I think, honestly, we do take a lot of these things light, but this is a topic where a lot of these are connected. Even one of these proves that it's haram. The fact that a lot of these are connected, not to mention the issue of wasting time. And this, this is not something that is beneficial at all. This is in the sense that it's not bringing a worldly benefit to you. There are other ways to relax that don't have these haram elements. Uh, it's not like going to the supermarket to get your shopping. It's not like going to a restaurant to eat. This is literally, I think the word you used yesterday was taffy, right? It's just is nothing it's just so a lot of these kind of things really when I thought about it and it took me a whole night I'm not going to lie last night thinking about it this morning thinking about it what I urge the Muslims who are watching this who find this difficult to swallow who might be big football fans is just think about it watch this podcast even a couple of times this is just meant to provoke some thoughts whether you agree with the ruling that's up to you our, you know our job is to convey the ruling but really I, we, I want to make people think and I want people to understand the system that they're part of it's a non-Muslim system that has got many many issues many many issues and you're part of this system and you're making an active role of watching this system it's something that's very problematic for me and I'm saying that as someone who's come from a previous history of being a football fan. That's all I wanted to say. And I finally want to say, Shahi, Jazakallah khairan, honestly. Allah, you, you do a lot of work behind the scenes, nah. people don't know. And um, we have a lot of back and forths and discussions and dialogues about many different topics. And mashallah, you've always stood a ground where unless you're convinced with evidences and mm. proofs, you're not willing to take it. So some people think sometimes that the, the position that you take here is devil's advocate per se, but it's actually what takes place a lot of the times behind the scenes. It's true. <laughs> You're actually always opposite to yeah. what I have to uh, bring to the table. So you really put me in a position where I have to really rephrase my, my arguments and sharpen it. So mm. Jazakallah khairan. Mm. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala add it to your scales of righteous deed, Yom Al-Qiyamah. And uh, I think you... You do a lot of work. Exactly. No, I that. Um, no, honestly, uh, there's a good point. It's an issue, issue. Some people might think that I'm just, you know, playing the role again. I'm on your side. Honestly, this particular topic, like, you know, we discussed it yesterday for maybe two hours, maybe three hours. I'm not sure. But when we spoke about it, I'm not a person who really just, because you say something, I just blind for, I have to understand myself. I have to question, I have to understand. 
And that's why I'd encourage the people at home as well, really think about these points in a lot of detail. Don't just dismiss them easily because it's about something that you've never heard or you know anything like that, inshallah. So, okay, I think we'll close it here now, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, ashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.